And I was like that too because of school. Mm. That was another school yeah. thing is to hate. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Rothko was like the devil. And I didn't even want to look at Rothko's work. I was just <laughs> tired and the only bench was in front of a Rothko painting. <laughs> yeah. So I sat there and it's almost embarrassing to admit it. I sat there for like 15, 20 minutes and all of a sudden I got kind of emotional. Mm-hmm. I was like, what is going on with me? Like, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so welcome to Waiting to Dry. We got, what episode is this? Probably seventh one, I think, something like that. Okay. I guess it doesn't really matter. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I'm bad at math. <laughs> <laughs> bad at math, bad at names, bad at everything. It's like, it's like but that's counting. But good at painting. Uh, man, <laughs> above average, I like to say. <laughs> uh, that's good in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, so... So we got John Wentz in the house. What's up, John? What's Hello. Up? <laughs> literally. Literally in the house. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, John and I go pretty far back now these days. Uh, we met in art school at the famed Academy of Art <laughs> that gets trashed every episode. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much every episode. We're, we should have like a, a disclaimer. Like, if you are pro art school, specifically the Academy... Probably. I guess they're they're not a sponsor. <laughs> yeah. We're working on it. <laughs> uh, it's like one of those things where the guys are like, "Oh, you got to neg girls." <laughs> That's what we do. We're like, "Fuck the art school. You're not even that cute." <laughs> uh, yeah, it gets trashed a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I have no beef with it. I just think it's like whoever is prone to learning that way should go to the art school. And if, mm. if you were the kid in school who hated school, <laughs> in my opinion, you probably shouldn't go that route. <laughs> probably not. Well, they usually drop out <clears throat> in the first semester anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Or two. <laughs> Shout yeah. out to Monty. He had his whole story on this podcast about how he got kicked out in the first semester. <laughs> From the academy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't know he went. For causing did trouble. Because I listened to yours, the first one. Was right. it the academy you went to? Because you went no, for like. No, I didn't even go. So they called me. Like, oh, okay, you didn't go. They called me right before we were supposed to start. And she was like, hey, I'm just like trying to see. And I told her, no, I don't want to go. And then she said I would lose any kind of uh, anything, any money that I put towards the college would just be gone and mm. i was like okay bye <laughs> oh okay i missed it yeah i didn't remember correctly <clears throat> that's all right no. that's good you very forgetful. Forgetful. <laughs> good for you <laughs> yeah, good yeah for you <laughs> yeah. yeah you went right yeah i went and finished did, and you didn't finish right no i i went for pretty much the same al- amount of time that you did but yeah. i just took um instead of uh taking general ed courses to get my degree i just took more painting classes that's right that's what i heard on the podcast yeah that was smart smart. i wish i would have done that (laughs) no i finished and graduated and walked and all of that yeah yeah i never even thought about that i never thought that when you go to art school do you have like cap and gown and all that yeah Mm -hmm. yeah i never thought about that yeah I think about that for every other college, but for some reason, art school, I just assumed nobody was, takes art school seriously. It was too cool. It was like, <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, too untraditional or something, but I mean, whatever. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know anything about art school, so well, that's good to know in case I ever want to wear a cap and gown. Yeah. Go back to school. It's never too late, Josh. It's never too late. <laughs> Sound like my mom now. <laughs> she wants me to get a degree so I can teach. I'm like, I don't want to teach at the Academy of Art though. Uh, well, in most schools, you don't even need a degree to teach. I mean, it depends on the school, but mm-hmm. a lot you don't. Your your background and your CV. Yeah. From what I've been told, do it enough. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. An, an art degree is pretty much the most useless thing. Yeah. All right. Yeah, the unless it's, it's good if you suck at art <laughs> yeah. and you want to teach. That's true. Because <laughs> I've had that, at least in high school, I'm assuming my teachers were top Probably. Uh-huh. art and not all of them were that great. Yeah. So yeah, that happens a lot. Yeah. Unless you get a master. I don't know. There's always a lot of debate. I've gotten a lot of debate with people about that, the value of an art degree. And a lot of people that I've debated with, their main point comes down to like, well, it's a good networking thing. 
Mm. Like, wait, can you guys swear on this? Do you, yeah. Do you, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fuck no. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, well, that's a really fucking expensive way to network. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. No yeah. Now you have Facebook. You can just yeah. Do, but, <laughs> Instagram. Yeah. But I think it, you know, a master's is worth it, and depending where you go. Mm. You know, you can get into Yale or something like that. It depends the road you want to travel. Yeah. It yeah, definitely I seems like there's on... also a different like art world where the school kind of dictates how successful you are as like the new artist or something. Yeah, it's yeah exactly. That's what I mean. Like if it's a place like Yale right. or maybe even RISD or something like that with a lot of clout, then there's going to be people watching you. Right. You know, as you're out of there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not the academy, <laughs> not in fine art at least. Maybe like fashion or something like that. No, maybe. But yeah, yeah. How many classes did we have together? Oh, there was a couple. I was trying to lot. figure out which ones we had together. Um, we had anatomy. I remember that. Yeah, was that down in the church basement? <laughs> yeah, in the basement. Remember? And it was the night class, and they were they had that club next door. And you remember at around like eight thirty yeah. or something, all of a sudden the music was would come on. Ruby or <laughs> something. Yeah, the Ruby. Yeah, Ruby or something. And all of a sudden you. Go, <laughs> like, oh, I remember that now, Jesus. And um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I can't. Sean something was the instructor. Sean Connor. Sean, yeah, yeah. And so Sean he was Connor? a no music guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, different Sean Connor. Uh, not the Terminator. Not the Terminator. <laughs> or, uh, John Connor. I want to say Highlander. What the hell was Sean Connor? Oh, I James don't know. Bond. Sean um, Connery. Uh, <laughs> Zardoz. Uh, but he would, he was a no music guy. So yeah. at some point it's dead quiet in the class and we're drawing and all of a sudden, yeah, you hear that. <laughs> <laughs> no this music. Sucks. What is that? What is that like, uh, pertain to like uh, most classes would let you listen to your music or they would play music. Well, it would be different, right? Cause sometimes teachers would play music when you're drawing from the model. Right. And some would let you listen to your own headphones. Some wouldn't. Mm-hmm. Um, like I, I remember, I don't want to do too much school talking shit, but. <laughs> or talking about school. But you remember, did you ever Doug Malone? Yeah, of course, yeah. He wouldn't allow headphones. It was in my class. Oh, this was right. a notorious yeah, yeah. thing where a guy got caught cheating because he, um, on the final for all the anatomy, yeah. he put it on a tape and oh, listened to funny. it. So it was on repeat. <laughs> yeah. And it would see like humorous, <laughs> insertion, origin, fun, you know. And, yeah. and Doug was walking around. All of a sudden he heard something like somebody saying insertion and function. <laughs> so he took the guy's headphones <laughs> and he cheated the whole that's, quiz, put, oh, it on, put it on a cassette or a disc or something. It's like a Ferris Bueller move. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was so, so he was a no headphone guy from there on out. You wow. couldn't use your own. That's, that's hilarious. That's awesome. So, so I guess, uh, what, what is your overall opinion of going to art school? No, we've, we've had, we've had a bunch of, uh, fuck schools. <laughs> so I'm assuming you're not a fuck school. I'm, I'm not, I'm not a fuck learning. Like I'm very pro learning. Like, right. Like, what I tell people not like who seriously ask advice about that is I say to search out an atelier. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, because especially if it's a for-profit school, I'm just done with that. I think it's bullshit. Mm. Um, but their ateliers, you know, like there was safe house that moved to yeah. LA. Like if you really want to learn, I mean, there's such a fraction of the cost you know, right. of, of a place like the Academy or any other, you know, school that teaches some kind of realistic art. Mm-hmm. You, you know, so you probably get the same better schooling for, you know, what, maybe a few grand in right. as opposed right. to 80 grand in. Yeah, no kidding. So that, that's what I tell So I'm not opposed to learning, but I think art schools, especially now, it's like with the internet and everything, the argument, like we were talking before, it used to be about degree, like you need, but we all know in art, you don't need a degree. Right. right. Your art <clears throat> speaks for itself. Yeah, so. you need to just be good. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know what else. There's something else that is pretty important. <laughs> well, to be a successful artist, you got to be pretty self motivated. And so, also, not, yeah. not boring, I think is the word I'm trying to <laughs> you know, like, I feel like there's a lot of people I think are really talented, but I'm like, gosh, that's kind of boring. Yeah. And I don't or think school redundant. can help with that. Like, if anything, I think a lot, I don't know how your experience, like, I, uh-huh. I'm still trying to shake off things that I learned from the academy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of that still. Um, yeah. The, definitely when you leave school and you see other people graduating from that school, there's that academy style. Mm-hmm. There was like, um, like, um, did you have James Wu? Oh yeah. 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 Did James we have was, them together? Maybe we did. We might've. Yeah, yeah. For figure painting. But yeah, it was the, um, the, they always used to the say, the I'm Sergeant's, the J- my <laughs> Sergeant's my brother. Sergeant's my brother. 
Uh, but there was a, a, a kind of like almost like a meme before memes of like the James Wu nose. Everybody's nose was red. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, how yeah. he taught yeah. you how to how to draw noses mm-hmm. yeah. with the little highlight on the nose. Yeah. And you see people still do that like yep. out of out of school. Like you went to the academy. I could tell. I could just tell how you paint like the orangey light that still looks like those academy, um, the the lights that they have you use at the um, – and all the studio classes have that same like orangey light. Yeah. So everybody kind of paints that that way. Yeah. Um, For me, it's the highlight. School. I can always tell by the way people do highlights. Yeah. Like you went to the academy. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, especially when you still see models f- from the academy in their portfolio. <laughs> oh yeah, you still see Gregory or <laughs> yeah. Richard. <laughs> yeah. What's his name? Terry. Terry. Oh yeah. <laughs> Terry with the eyebrows. Yeah, Terry's been there forever. <laughs> This could just be a total academy <laughs> podcast. <laughs> yeah, we'll just switch that. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, so <clears throat> we, we're we'll, we'll pull it. But I want to kind of figure out before the academy. That's like a, mm. if possible, like a, uh, like I mean, I've pretty much asked everyone how they kind of got into art. If you were you like the art kid in school or? Yeah, I mean, it's I don't know you're probably the same beginning as, as everybody time. else. Yeah. I always tell people it's because I, you know, I listen to your podcasts and then a couple others and, you know, you always know other artists and I, I feel like we all had like the same beginning. It's like you were the art kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everybody drew, you just didn't stop drawing. Right. And, right. and mm-hmm. everybody's always a little socially awkward and that helped with, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, sitting around drawing all the time. So yeah, it was the same thing. I was the art kid. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you find like the value in art because people are like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. When you're yeah. a kid, that's like big. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. Especially when you're quiet and you're shy, you're mm-hmm. kind of a dork. Like mm-hmm. you have that, you're like, yeah, I'm the I'm yeah. guy who can draw skulls. <laughs> <and> draw <laughs> books. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Draw. Comic book uh, characters, or in my case, Dragon Ball Z. Dragon, yeah. <laughs> so I was Batman and yeah. Spider Man and skulls, yeah, and dragons <laughs> from Dungeons and Dragons, though. Not oh, Dragon there Ball. you go. Nice. Yeah. yeah, comic books seem to be so big for. I mean, they were never my thing, but mm-hmm. there were definitely a lot of artists started off in that whole comic book recreating Spider Mans and yeah, and, and different Batman versions and. All that good stuff. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's what it was for me. Is like the one that hooked me was um, was this Frank Miller's. Was it the Dark Knight Returns? I think there was that comic book series he did when he took over Batman and made mm-hmm. Batman really dark. Yeah, dark right. Knight. And that style of like that high like contrast chiaroscuro, mm-hmm. right. hard edge, and that really right. That's what got me like really hooked me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that'll do it for mm-hmm. sure. Especially yeah, when when the you see like so many different. Uh, comic books that are just kind of like cookie cut almost and then Frank Miller he's just so stylized that you're like oh and mm-hmm. dark that's what was yeah. cool about it yeah it's a lot of them are still these bright happy looking things I was never really into like X-Men or mm-hmm. only Spider-Man right. Fantastic Four yeah so it's kind of corny <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah like Batman he was dark and brooding <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah he's also like one of the few that isn't really like magical yeah. Right. Yeah. That, that's. I mean, that's. I guess every Batman fan says that the thing that was yeah. cool is he had no superpowers, so yeah. it's more relatable. Like I never understood. I still get in this debate. I fucking hate Superman. I hate Superman. Oh yeah. yeah. He's the worst superhero. <laughs> he can do yeah. everything. I know, and it's funny because they have like the Batman versus Superman, and it's like, so you have this fucking superhuman being fighting this regular guy, and it's supposed to be like this yeah. competition. It's like, how does that even make any sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because in reality, he just would have melted him. Yeah, I mean, he can turn the time back. He can turn time back by spinning around the world. And We've all so, seen that movie. <laughs> yeah. and somehow, and somehow, uh, Batman's a challenge. I don't get it because he's super smart, man. Yeah, he's genius level. Yeah, I know. He beat the Hulk too. I forget which uh, series it was. Wow. Um, he also Batman kicked the Hulk's ass. So. Suck it, really? Hulk. Yeah, it was a cross uh, universe. Yeah, thing. it was one of DC Marvel crossovers. Oh wow. Mm. From like nineties, I think, or something. Mm-hmm. I can't remember. Nice, running nice. out of ideas at that point. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, so, I mean, your art's kind of pretty dark as well, right? Like you, you, you definitely seem to have like not necessarily all of it. I, I was talking to Sergio a little bit about this the other day. I was like, sometimes I can kind of, I, I might be dead wrong, but I'm like, I could, I feel like I can kind of sense 
or John is mentally based on your palate. <laughs> you know, like the underpainting. I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's awesome, but I don't know if anyone else picks up on it or if, even if I'm right. But uh, I'm like, oh, it seems like he's kind of in this like Batman brooding mode right now, and sometimes <laughs> you're you're uh, you're using way more brighter or like warmer tones. Is that, yeah, that no, apply? it's no, that I, it's not the first time I've heard that, and it definitely there's there's truth. There's some truth to it. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> That's pretty awesome, though. It's like a it's like a reading your pulse kind of through through your palate. Yeah, you know? I mean. I don't know. I don't see any negative to it. No. It, it, the only downer is like, especially there was a string of uh, paintings I did where I was in a really bad headspace mm-hmm. and uh, ingesting a lot of things I shouldn't have been for a while. Mm. Coca Cola. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so does. Uh-huh. Um, but the downside is, and after that, when I got out of that and started doing some different things, then hearing people go like, "Oh, I preferred the older stuff." Mm. And like, oh man, I was in the worst. Right. point of my life like i don't want to hear that like yeah. you know your paintings i liked your paintings better then i think musicians you know? have the same issue you know they they do these like horribly sad great yeah. sad songs and you're like and people like to like sit in that and wallow in it or feel something you know but it's probably difficult for the artist to to produce that uh without living a miserable life and you see some artists yeah. who chase the misery because of that you know it's almost like they embrace that and you're like fuck that's dark you know yeah i think so yeah uh, a lot of people like that but yeah i mean yeah that's tough but yeah. i i i i seem to lean towards i think the things where i'm like where you seem more kind of happier at least through palette like those are the ones i'm always like oh these are fucking awesome oh, uh, thanks <laughs> yeah but i'm I mean, and not only that, but you're the stuff where like the palettes are seem very cold and stuff. You're not overly doing it. It's not like you're like, it's not like some person like in a corner crying. It's not, that's not what you're painting, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that sounds so awful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be awesome if you started painting that. <laughs> Well, that's another, not to go back to that, but that's another academy trope. I don't know if you remember those paintings of always somebody in a San Francisco apartment, <laughs> like with their head down. Um, yeah, kind of. That was always the figure painting homework. Mm. Oh, final. yeah. <laughs> By a window, you know, so you get the natural light. <laughs> yeah. You can put like, yellow in the, the white and put a nice big highlight on the back. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, true. Yeah. Uh, Some people go off and make a whole career out of that, basically. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, definitely. (laughs) Yeah, we we all know the academy stuff, guys. Preaching to the I won't do that again. (laughs) I had to bring that last one up. I actually love it. (laughs) But that Uh, does like uh, we've been talking about graffiti so much (laughs) that it's kind of nice. It's kind of nice to have uh, balance it out. Yeah, because Sergio's usually in the corner, like no idea what he's talking about. So. Like I kind of remember some stuff like back when I was a teenager when I was into graffiti, but then I totally don't know any of the names anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, it's just a different, <laughs> different schooling. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, but, um, so you were saying like you had to get away from Academy tropes, like what things were you doing back then and that you're not doing anymore? Um, I have a question. I think there's like there's the technical like formal things and then like mental things. Mm-hmm. Like the first thing for me was because um, it was weird. Like going into school, my mind frame was like almost anybody else at the time, like in the '90s or whenever it was. But it's like that juxtapose. Like right. I would go to every show at Minna, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, when they're like amazing, like Eric White and all these guys oh, yeah. and. and um, like I can't uh, remember names right I remember now. David Chun Li filled the whole um, yeah. thing with. Art is yeah, amazing. amazing. Too. <laughs> so it was like that's what I went in to the mind frame, and then halfway through it, I became one of those academy people where it was like only Sergeant, <laughs> only Zorn. Yeah, right. you know. And then next thing I know, I was just painting, you know, just a standard. Like my my artwork looked like classwork. It was just a right. naked person mm-hmm. on a stand, and I uh-huh. thought that was art. Right. Mm-hmm. Until I remember seeing, uh, I had a friend who. I think they went to a show where they saw a piece of work, but it, it was a, just a nude figure on a stand. And they said, wow, that person really likes naked people. <laughs> yeah. And, but it was a big thing for me because it, it put me in that 
the eyes of a, of a regular person again, like looking at all. Yeah, like, exactly. That's just a naked person. That to us, we're <laughs> looking at like, man, look at those brush strokes. Look at the lighting, the anatomy, the proportions. Yeah. Right. And so it was like that was the first thing was like getting that back. Like, why was I interested in art, and mm. did I want to make? Yeah. And then, That's awesome. you know, after that, it's just formal stuff like, you know, yeah. Academy palette. Like I never, oh, for sure. <laughs> you know, that pal we all were taught and I mm-hmm. never brought, like if somebody brought a different color, like, like what are you going to do with that? <laughs> <laughs> it's a lame color. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just, yeah, things like different, different brushes, like getting away from filberts. You know? <laughs> yeah. Learned with a filbert. Like, so I went, and I think or I painted. Everything painted with flats. Like yeah. Like yeah. inch flats. Yeah. Yeah. So I got, I remember I only painted with uh, long filberts or the Egberts. Yeah. For like two years just to get out of that oh that's mm. that's mind cool, frame. Yeah. like so there's just things like that and then now there's just you know small things that i don't think we'll ever be able to shake because you know i was talking with a while back uh brett amory mm-hmm. about this and we were talking about like everybody and your name got brought up so we're like you can look at every one of us that went to that school mm-hmm. none of our work really looks that much the same right but you can see that element of the academy mm. oh for sure work. so yeah. it's almost intangible <laughs> it's like what the fuck is this thing <laughs> i can see it in kim kogan's work yeah i can oh, even see sure. even in, in david chung lee's work oh and, yeah. not, and it's not bad i'm gonna say it's bad right. but it's just weird it's like if you really want to change how you pay i'm like i think i'd have to blind my full, blindfold <laughs> myself and mm-hmm. use my left hand to like fully mm get rid of it so i'm not saying it's good or bad but it's just one of those things like you know you start you maybe look at maybe artists. you should pick up boxing and just like lose some brain cells <laughs> <laughs> i think i've blown enough of that <laughs> with maybe. the coca-cola yeah with the coca-cola <laughs> yeah, yeah for sure wow i've gotten into ufc lately so maybe i'll actually start mm. doing it that would be nice. cool my brother just picked up jujitsu Oh, oh really? did he really? Yeah, he he had a his first black eye recently because he got kneed in the face on accident. Oh, Damn. Fuck. How long has he been doing it? What's his belt? Um, a couple months now since I think a little bit before Christmas. Okay, uh, maybe like five six months. Mm. But he's into it. He's really into it. Wow. Um, Do you he, think you would ever get into it? Like probably as a practice? not. I'm <laughs> I'm kind of afraid because he's my younger brother. He's pretty big though, and. Mm. I've always been able to beat him up. Oh, and not I, anymore. In my head, uh, even though we're grown ass men, I'm like, oh, he might be able to beat me up. I'm like, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna have to pick up boxing or something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah, th- that's one of those awesome forms of, I don't know what you call it, mental exercises and physical yeah. exercise yeah. combined. Yeah. Uh, I've least, been really a lot more fascinated with those things. I don't know if it's like getting needing to get away from painting mm-hmm. but i've been more fascinated with outside things like that like i'm really interested in martial arts and like jujitsu right. like mm. other types of art forms right yeah, yeah. Definitely. that take different types of focus mm-hmm. yeah yeah definitely yeah. those things yeah, are was... all, any kind of like those art forms like just like painting is great because you are never not learning mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. the physical ones are awesome because you know, uh, our, our relationship to learning is based off of our brain to hand, but all that like physical stuff is just full body. They have like this wealth of knowledge. Like as far as I remember when I used when I was younger and a lot smaller, I would skate and, uh, you kind of get these like weird, like you, your balance with your feet is just so much better than, Oh yeah. I know. skated for years. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I definitely don't have that uh, balance anymore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's it's cool when you understand your body to a level that, you know, you, and push that level and yeah. learn more. Mm-hmm. Well, but yeah, I was telling Josh one time to to watch um, Jiro Dreams of Sushi. Oh Did you ever yeah, watch that? yeah, yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah. It's a great documentary because yeah. it uh, the way he approaches like sushi making is is a lot like it reminded me so much of how like master painters talk about art or like their painting practice yeah. just this lifelong dedication to something that might not matter that much to most people but the dedication to it just like when you're dedicated to your craft that much it shows through no matter what you're doing mm-hmm. yeah 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 there's so much yeah i love little documentaries like that or stories like that where there's a universal through line because mm-hmm. i remember there's one thing he said in there that stuck with me he said um he never once, and he works like every day, never takes a vacation or something. Yeah. And he never hated his job his yeah. entire life. And, that, and I mean, I don't know how many times, like, I, I think we've all done, like, you sit down to paint, like, I'd rather do anything else today than paint. Oh, for sure, yeah. And he's like, no, every single day he was happy to <laughs> go and make sushi. And and it's not even complicated sushi. It's, yeah. You know, the nigiri mm. and 
and you're like, man, that's a dedication. That yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. I wish I had. <laughs> yeah. yeah, cooking is one of those awesome art forms <laughs> as well. I'm a huge cooking fan. Mm-hmm. And, Do you cook? Yeah, a lot. Uh, but I'm just like consistently trying to like teach myself new techniques and new uh, like dishes that I've never made before, and mm. and like tweaking like certain dishes to like make them better or closer to the dish I want it to be and stuff like that. Yeah. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. It's like the, I mean, I, I also do like a little bit of woodworking and trying to, I'm trying to teach myself that I'm not good at all at it right now, (laughs) but it's a definitely a cool learning thing. But I just, I gravitate to any of those things where you're creating and physically doing something and, and learning consistently that that's, I just, I, it's like, that's just how my brain works, you know? Yeah. It's even, you know, how you were saying like, uh, you know, you sit and you need to paint, but you're like, that's the last thing you want to do for me. It, even if I don't want to paint, it's like, all right, then what can I do? Like, maybe I should like try to practice on my dovetail for woodworking. You know, it's like, yeah, there's always something you can improve. Yeah. On there. It's like, I don't want to paint today, but I still want to create. Mm. That's kind of like, I, it, but that's just kind of my habit. You know, I'm I'm just addicted to that kind of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, enough about me. Let's talk about you. <laughs> <laughs> I live with myself. I'd rather hear about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, the uh, another thing I I noticed that is that you're you're about to be overseas pretty soon. Yeah, in less than two weeks. Nice. Yeah, I'm going to Paris. That's awesome. Yeah. And you're going to be there for a while, right? Three months. Cool. That's yeah. a good chunk of time. I'm doing the maximum the visa will allow. Right. right. For nice. a visitor's visa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Nice. You got big plans over there? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, I mean, can I, yeah. I mean. Like any bucket list stuff? At, I mean. I went there back in October. Mm-hmm. So I got a lot of the bucket list stuff out of the way. Like went to the Louvre, went to uh-huh. Dorsey and. Mm-hmm. Um, you ate, know, a, ate a crepe. Ate a, yeah. <laughs> Crep. <laughs> the other thing I did is start learning French. Ooh. Voila. Um, no, yeah, I ate tons or, of or food. Or a croissant. <laughs> croissant. That's what I, I be, said. You know what sucks? I became one of those. I used to make, I used to, when I was in school, I, did, I was, did a barista job. Okay. And I always hated the people who would come in and they go, like, I have a latte and a croissant. Yeah. yeah. Like, Dude, really? Come on. Now I'm that person. <laughs> I'm like, uh, croissant. I'm kind of, I, I've, I've slowly kind of seen that in myself as well. <laughs> Or like even like Spanish words and stuff, you know, like I'll have like a friend who he'll, he'll say, he'll like roll his R's and he's like a white guy. Yeah. And I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> come on. And now I'm like, yeah, you're right. Like I, I was being yeah. an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> it's a better way to do yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, cause, you know, I just think of it as um, if people were trying to learn English and we were like, exactly. this is how you say the word. And they're like. And they purposefully say it incorrectly. I'd be like, "You're a fucking asshole." Exactly. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's the thing. When I started learning French, going over there, like I wouldn't force the pronunciations. Mm-hmm. And my better half, who's teaching me, she would try to get me to do it. And I'm like, I don't see the point. And then I thought about that. Like people learning English. I'm right. Like, okay, I get it. Yeah. I sound like an ass if I'm just like "s'il vous plaît." <laughs> you yeah. have to, you know. And it's a re- it's a certain respect, I think. Yeah, to, I think to so. The culture and the language. I agree. And, and you would assume the same if someone came to wherever, like whatever country you were, you're from, like if you're from America and you're speaking English, it, you would just, you know, just put yourself in that predicament. If someone yeah. is trying to learn your language and you're like, yeah, this is how you say it. And they're like, yeah, I'm just going to not try that hard. <laughs> You'd be like, All right. you know, and you would stop trying to teach them. I really think like when you look at the current, I mean, there's so much wrong with the current political state, but the way that yeah. Americans can be with their entitlement, mm-hmm. yeah. I really think it should be mandatory. Like we should have government programs to send people overseas yeah. for an amount of time to experience what it's like to be the outsider. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know, I know Australia, they have like right after you graduate, they call it college is like high school. Mm-hmm. And then right after that, they kind of have like a time abroad where like they take a year off before they go to university, you know, and then they oh, go they and they, yeah. And they go to uh, like a different country and experience, it. and it's very, it's very common. That's why people run into Australian tourists all the time because people are yeah. out traveling. A lot of <clears throat> countries, I've um, friends in Germany, and they mm-hmm. have uh, the way that just their system is set up, where you get 
I mean, most jobs are like five uh, weeks of vacation a year, mm -hmm. and they have incentivized programs for you to go overseas. Yeah. I have friends who come here all the time every year for vacation mm -hmm. and somehow work it into their work, or you know, it's part of a government program. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. great, man. Yeah. Yeah, you awesome. really get to be in somebody else's shoes. And yeah, it's really true. I, I have a coworker, and he never thought that way. And for his honeymoon, he went to Thailand. He was like, wow, like. I really want to travel now like because i never thought of other places and other people i never understood yeah. that and by going there you kind of get this different point of view of how things are done because every country does things differently and it doesn't mean you're doing it right and they're doing it wrong it's just like some different way and it's kind of cool to be like oh that's a different way of looking at yeah. solving that problem and especially for i mean anybody but i think it's great for artists because yeah, the way sure. that you know i i didn't expect there to be that different different of a view on art mm -hmm. in France and here, but there is, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, some of the artists that I met there. Did they call us all stupid? Um more or less. Yeah. <laughs> We're just, just you in particular. <laughs> they just said me. No, it was yeah, I mean anywhere you go now I've done a lot of traveling um since the Trump thing and it's just put a black mark on all of us. Oh I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. We're all just stupid cowboys <laughs> with guns to everybody yeah. else. <laughs> hey, which is another great thing though, like traveling during this administration has been a really right. big eye opener. So it's I've learned mm -hmm. a lot about art and just a lot about global politics. And yeah. People see us. That's awesome. Yeah, we're kind of assholes. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I mean, not bit. us, but us. Not us three in this room. No, we're super cool. <laughs> but, no, but it is weird. Like, really, like when I was in, like people I talked to in France, they're like, I would ask them, you know, it's almost like I was probably annoying. It was like a homework assignment. So I'm like, how do you see Americans? You know, <laughs> yeah. And almost every like, yeah, pretty much just like cowboys with guns. That's what, yeah. That's how the world sees us. And yeah. It's yeah. fucking ridiculous. Yeah. But, yeah. but I was talking to, um, well, they're actually my brother's good friends from Australia and I was like, what do you guys, th they were here in San Francisco for a little bit, for a year or two, and I was like, oh, what do you guys think about all this shit going down? And I think it was before Trump got elected, and they were like, fuck, it's so stupid. And I'm like, I don't know, right? And then, and then, but they said, but, you know, in Australia, we have, we have a Trump. And I know. Oh, like, yeah, they have a couple. Yeah, and I know in France, they kind of have like a female Le Pen. Trump. Yeah, Le Pen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Le Pen, yeah. And it's like. It, you know, we, we, they're just kind of, uh, I just said, we, we, <laughs> uh, but, uh, not cool, man. <laughs> how was my uh, enunciation of that? Uh, but, uh, but look, what's the difference with them? They didn't elect exactly, those people. That's what I was going to say. The big difference. Yes, oh, they're yeah. like, that guy's a fucking idiot. Let's not, let's not go that route. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, uh, that it, it is, it is, uh, heartbreaking. <laughs> I didn't want to talk about this shit. Yeah, sorry <laughs> to bring it up. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going. I'm going to Paris. <laughs> yeah. yeah, good for you. Great. We're so happy. <laughs> but how is their attitude about art different? Um, I can't speak too much for the street art because I didn't meet a lot of street artists out there. But in mm -hmm. general, it seems to be they're not as commercialized. Mm -hmm. So they're far more. Um, and I, I hate to paint things with a broad brush because I'm sure it doesn't apply to everybody. These are the people I met. And um, so they're far more experimental and there's a different type of passion. Because I, I find here I'm super guilty and everybody else I know talking, we talk more about social media than we talk about art, I think, mm. a lot of times. <laughs> right? I mean, how many times does that happen? You start talking about right. I did this yesterday. So we're talking about art. Next thing I know, we're talking about Instagram algorithms. <laughs> yeah. And right. so yeah. That yeah. didn't happen once there. Like, they don't have huh. that. Um, that hold on social media like I do. So I had very mm -hmm. long conversations about art that hasn't mm. really happened since art school. Mm. Um, they're not that concerned with it, most of them, that I, the people that I met. Yeah. So there's a, a really, it almost felt like being back in art school. There's that honesty and that passion that I don't think can happen now, like once you're really knee deep in social media. Mm. Uh, or maybe I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong with that. But yeah, it was, and they don't censor most of people I met weren't very concerned with selling. Mm -hmm. They're just boom, they'll paint anything, their ideas. You know, there's no nothing holding them back. Yeah. And what they want to do or try to do. So things are a lot more experimental. Mm. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah, it does change your attitude when it becomes your uh, way to make money. You have to think about things that you right. didn't want to, especially I, when you were a student. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't. But I also wouldn't define your work as not being experimental. I, I'm always like seeing you trying new, different, new and like different things, and, and that's stuff very like that. true. Yeah. yeah, but I think even I'm guilty of like oh, that sounds so arrogant to say that. I'm guilty of. <laughs> but 
Um, and that, but even that, I mean, I have things I would like to do that, that I won't do because I'm like, well, I, this is where I'm knee deep in now. Like right. uh, I'm, this is how I'm making my living. So I can't, right. I do those things on the side, but mm-hmm. it's not something I'm going to put right. in a gallery or something. So there's still yeah. compromise. I think I try to work within a certain parameter. Do you ever yeah, want I'm to going through like that a, right now with my own stuff. Are you? Yeah. Cause I have like, Josh has been to my studio and he's seen some of the experimental sort of semi abstract stuff that I've been doing when I have time to, but everybody wants their painted roses. So you gotta <laughs> yeah. Keep feeding the beast in that way. I feel like I'm yeah. slowly trying to like <laughs> sway Sergio away from it. <laughs> Just fucking do drink it. the Kool-Aid Sergio. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. And you, did, it's, Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Okay, I was going to yeah. ask, did you ever want to start like a secret, you know, like, well, what's the, what's the, uh, What's it called when you, you, you like will write under a different oh, name? Oh, a nom de plume? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a goat? Or, Trust uh, him. He's been to France. He knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's eating a croissant. A croissant. <laughs> um, no, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Like under a pen name. Like yeah, writers yeah, yeah. have a pen name. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, I, I thought about it for a hot second, but I think, I mean, I'm still do the, those side things. I think eventually I'm just going to put them out there, but I don't right. want to do it under a pen name. I know a few yeah. artists who've done that. And, it's like mm-hmm. I don't see the point because really it's you know a lot of people like the talking that I've done with people is mostly the concern. I mean, there's a sales concern, but I think a lot of people are more concerned again about social media because right. mm-hmm. when I've talked to artists who've done that, they're like, "Yeah, man, my likes went way down." <laughs> so it's never really yeah. anything substantial that kills your career. It's just like, "Oh, you got less likes." Right? Yeah, okay. yeah, for sure. Yeah, that that really hurts your bill. <laughs> yeah. Can't yeah, that's good. With I, likes. I wonder if the social media thing is based <laughs> off of like being being raised in like a country where you're told like they're number one and like you know everyone's you almost get like this a uh, self important like you feel so important as a person in America because you're you're part of the greatest country in the world and and you know and then everything like slowly breaks down to like it's like yourself you know it's like the whole thing of like all the magazines that are successful are like are like you and like uh they're like pointed towards you i remember someone broke down like there used to be a magazine called people and then it changed to like us and then it was oh, like yeah. me and, and then that's like <laughs> it ends up being like just like a magazine about you specifically and yeah it's like <laughs> you kind of get like fed this like you're important you're the best thing in the world i think so no i think there's a that where the- france is probably less focused on you know it's like the whole thing about oh they do like the uh the uh and schools also like oh what are what is america rated math and whatever and then like uh and like, 17th or something. yeah and then they'll say like in um in confidence or something we're rated number one yeah and it's like yeah well that's probably because well and that's another thing you learn when you travel like when you see other americans no matter what country we're always the loudest most entitled sounding people <laughs> next to Germans, maybe I don't know, <laughs> oh, um, but no, definitely America. Like when I last time I was in France, I could hear some boisterous loudness, and it was oh, Americans. <laughs> but and not to do a big American bashing thing, but there, I, I think you're right. I think there is this whole. I think it's a big stew of things that adds to this entitlement. And I definitely think social media is a yeah. part of it. Yeah, for sure, it's a huge part of it. Yeah, we're hmm. addicted to that thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hold on. Check my phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just got some likes. <laughs> someone, someone shared my photo. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, that's funny. The algorithm whole thing is definitely an obsession. It's like, yeah, it's insane. It's like you trying to crack. I don't know, it's like a game, kind of, but like a game I hate to play, but I play. Yeah. Well, and this is the thing about it, like, it, and especially since you know there was all the news about you know they changed the algorithm this year and this and that. Mm-hmm. There, I have a couple friends who are in the tech industry. I've been talking with lately. There's absolutely no thing, such thing as a hack. There's no way to beat it. There's no way. There's nothing because mm. it's a it's a self learning program, mm. and it learns the way you operate. So it's all impossible right. to have any type of hack. So the whole thing about like posting at a certain time of day, mm-hmm. anything, it's BS. There's <laughs> nothing it, you it, can do. It reminds me of that movie, The Beautiful Mind, you know, where like, oh yeah, yeah. Like he's solving this problem and at the end it's like, oh, he's just crazy. He's just nuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's like me and the fucking on the window just writing like the algorithm. <laughs> 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 yeah. And then and you just lose <laughs> your mind trying to figure yeah, it out. Exactly. Yeah. There's <laughs> nothing you can do about uh, it. You know? huh. Except for if you can take a really nice ass shot. 
you know, like I look, my ass looks good in a thong. So, <laughs> so uh, my likes will go up pretty soon and my yeah. followers will skyrocket. Isn't that mm. funny? We we can create this, we can put a, a car in outer space and we can create something like Instagram, but still the thing that gets the most attention <laughs> is a butt and a thong. Yeah. 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 yeah it's big spell. Sad, sad. <laughs> the primitive brain. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I don't, <laughs> whatever <laughs> so what's wrong with that <laughs> I mean I get it I don't I don't really go for that but I mean whatever <laughs> I always try to think of like the people that are like I got a buddy you know he he, he works and and he lives like a normal life and uh, that's that's his like gig you know he's always following like girls in thongs and stuff and mm-hmm. I'm like oh, I mean kind of makes sense I mean <laughs> what is he he's not gonna put a space in car you know and he, <laughs> or a car in space <laughs> and uh, he's not gonna he's, he's just like yeah well at least I got butt cheeks to look at yeah I guess yeah. everybody's got a different road in life <laughs> yeah you know, I guess it so. gets you by mm-hmm. yeah yeah isn't that sad then when you think not sad it's funny that when you know think about your own Instagram feed it's just a bunch of painters yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. that's what I look at. Paintings. <laughs> I know. It's so funny. I got it's... a lot of models in my feed too, though. So <laughs> I get I get a little dose of both in that way. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's funny when I see someone else's feed and it's I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. People do other stuff on this, thing. right? Yeah, yeah, you know this actually it's a bunch good... of memes too. Everybody. Oh yeah, memes. Like, yeah, I think that's a good when you because. I've recently, like, I was never that active on Facebook. Well, I go in and out, but lately mm-hmm. I've been back on there. And so seeing artists, like, everybody's complaining about not being seen and right. about the algorithm. Yeah. But that's a good thing to do is, like, go to your brother, your sister, mom, dad, whatever, and go on their feed. Mm-hmm. So you get an idea of what normal people are. Right. Yeah. Like, every artist thinks that, like, we think, like, we're the only thing on Instagram. Like, yeah. everybody should be looking at my paintings. Yeah. Like, no, people look at memes of cats. Right? Yeah. That's the most popular thing. That yeah. or some, yeah, everybody on the spouting their political, whatever side they're on. Oh, just yeah. Just yeah. resharing, yeah. yeah, the and latest if, if news. If you want to be the yeah. artist that's seen, just start paying super detailed eyeballs. That's true. <laughs> or mean, draw in charcoal. <laughs> if you're that mad. Oh, I just spit out my water. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> There's no algorithm secret. Just paint eyeballs. Just paint eyeballs. <laughs> yeah. Or draw or whatever. Or not even have to do that. Just um, repost other people's things. Yeah. That's so crazy that that's, there's accounts that have like 300,000 followers and all they do is just repost other people's art. Well, and they charge. I, I got oh, a, really? um, Yeah. I got an email the other day about that and mm. it was this account that had something like that, like half a million followers. Yeah. And so they wanted something like ten dollars a post. Like, oh, we'll really? Share your artwork. Oh, wow. And get your following yeah. up. Yeah, you, you know it's like, funny if you, <laughs> if you respond to them. I've responded like, no, I'm not going to do that. But you could share my art for free. And then they're like, well, we could work something out, like half price. I'm like, no, leave me alone. I was just kidding. I was just fucking <laughs> with you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it is weird that they think that you should pay them to post. I'm like, for what? What are you yeah. going to get me? Well, this is a weird thing in the culture is followers have become currency. Yeah. You know, it's a yeah. form of social currency. And you see that too. I've seen another, you know, trends of like, like I've been, I don't know why I started watching a lot of YouTube, I guess out of boredom. <laughs> and so I've become uh, kind of familiar with the new language of like, uh-huh. you know, content creator and influencer right. and things like that. And so there's a lot, um, you see people, I've seen artists now that are, you know, they have, ad, they'll get like shoes from a company or something from somebody yeah. and mm-hmm. then that's in their feed. Influencers. They're in, yeah, yeah, because they have a certain number of following. Mm-hmm. So followers have become currency. We put this weird importance on that. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. Turn followers into Bitcoin kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> But enough of Instagram. So yeah, we talk about yeah that. I know. You were just, the way we started was like, fucking Americans, they just can't help but talk about social media. And like, so let's talk about social media. <laughs> I am what I am. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's well, the fucking... thing is, because I think it, it is important, obviously, for all of us. I mean, it's, that changed the game. Like, Yeah, mm-hmm. it really did. So it, it, I do think it's important. I just, it's, it's weird, especially like so just coming back from Europe, it's like the, the level of importance we put on it to me mm-hmm. is just insane. Mm. I know, but it is important. I know, and you you hear it a lot too. When when we talk about social media, where we're like, do we want everyone to ingest our art in like a for, like a two by two screen, you know, mm-hmm. and yeah. all that stuff? It's like great and horrible at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was I remember we were talking about this the other day, and I just like blurted out like, oh, what if you like, what if they made like VR galleries? 
And I was like, that's kind of a genius idea. You know, like to ingest art instead of in a two by two screen. If you, f- cause that's like the other thing is like the, the debate about galleries and being able to, to really experience the art. <laughs> I mean, you still wouldn't even in like a virtual reality world, but I thought that was like a, and it's going to happen. Yeah. I don't yeah. want it to, but <laughs> it's going to happen. Art needs to be seen in person. I believe. I yeah. think so. Yeah. I mean, it's, a, and that's what we kind of, at least for me, that's what I love about art is like physically creating it with my hands and mm-hmm. not in mm-hmm. this make believe world. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> it, it's kind of like weird to try to yeah, go down that rabbit hole of thinking about galleries in a virtual reality world. Cause mm-hmm. it, it would just be a bigger screen pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. It's it's not the best way to ingest it. Mm-hmm. Just wait till we're able to 3D print out a painting and we're all done. <laughs> well, I don't know. Can't they pretty much do that? They had that yeah. one painting that, cr- I, yeah, that printer I guess that they, created a Rembrandt. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. Yeah, they can all... I mean, See, we're screwed. <laughs> yeah, we're screwed. <laughs> yeah, we're... Let's invest in no, 3D actually, printing. Actually, you know what then. they can do? Because I have a friend um, that I reconnected with after years and he does... Um, uh, makes figures like I don't want to say dolls, you know, like action mm-hmm. figures. So he'll mm-hmm. re- replicate like twelve-inch figures of mm-hmm. um, you know the Blade Runner characters and right. things like that. Yeah, and he does everything by hand. He sculpts the heads, and he said now he's competing with people who do them by three D printer. Yeah. yeah, like fuck, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's tough. I mean, you just have to like end up being the person that's selling the handmade item. You know, it's like you can buy a knife at Costco or you could buy this handmade fucking yeah. Japanese steel blade. You know, it's, it's one of the, it's like you, you and your market kind of gets smaller. Because yeah. yeah. It becomes a more niche thing, Yeah, which I think has already started happening, especially with like prints when prints got popular, mm-hmm. uh-huh. not prints in the revolution, but <laughs> prints. P R I N T S. Yeah. I, thanks. I-N-C. Yeah. That, that road for like original art became a little bit thinner. You know, right. As far as yeah. Buyers were concerned. Yeah. I think we're just talking ourselves into a, into a sad palette. This is getting really depressing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. After this, John Wentz is going to be like, all right, I got my palette for that. Um, yeah. <laughs> my palette's sad. All blues and blacks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Skin tones. Very, very cold. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Cold like my outlook. <laughs> cold like my heart. Uh, so I know you've been doing like a bunch of like um, partial, like I don't know how you call them, unfinished uh, portraiture, portraits or or um, I don't know how, how you would explain them. I mean, in, in my, I mean, I think they're finished, but it definitely leaves a lot to the imagination. Uh, yeah. I don't know when you started those or because uh, I mean, I think I've known uh, like I've, I remember when I when I first saw your art, it was like in that uh, place to structure, you know. Uh, oh yeah, and you were talking about that. Wasn't that your first show? Yeah, you were yeah, talking yeah, about, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was listening to that podcast, I was like in the car. I'm like, dude, that was my first show too. <laughs> yeah, and I remember yeah. seeing it because I like went and visited them for some some reason, and then uh, you were up, and I was like, fuck, this guy's stuff is amazing. I should quit. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it was it was like way different than it is now you know as far yeah. as uh i know it was a it was like uh mostly pencil and then you would have like these big like really rendered planets on them and then a lot of like comic book inspiration yeah. and uh like like um you know uh, that kind of stuff and and uh and then uh, you know i've slowly seen like it seems like you just do these big like leaps into different content that you're trying to like uh, talk about or or maybe just like a different way to to uh, develop a storyline or I don't know like like back then it was it seemed like very narrative heavy yeah and now it's much more like <clears throat> kind of like expressive and and just you uh, I I, don't know, I was talking talking to Sergio about this where I think you as far as those portraits I think that you're almost trying to get likeness without like with with the least amount of having like uh like it's almost like you like to the point where like you just put enough to be like i think i know who that is but uh you know but you 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 still leave enough out and i was like i wonder if that's why he does it he he doesn't want to it's almost like you want to just barely touch on their likeness or something uh and then it's like a 
in my head, I'm like, it might, maybe it's like a challenge for you to uh, to do that. But I might be dead wrong about that. I, I I just always been curious about that whole like. I mean, I love them. Uh, uh, the the work. I mean, I just really love unfinished artwork in general, or like the yeah. look of being unfinished. Like there's like a perfect point where you pull a painting away and you're like. Yep, that's, that's yeah, the right stop. point. And I noticed that on your story the other day. You wrote, like, I think this one is finished. And I just, like, love that, that idea of, like, because I always have it, too. I'm like, I think I'm done. But I'll, like, sit on it. And sometimes something will come up. And I'm like, oh, I know exactly what I need to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be, like, one mark. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Bing. Exactly. And it's, like, and I'm, like, so stoked about that one thing, too, yeah. usually. Yeah, it's usually your favorite thing yeah. that nobody else notices. <laughs> nobody. Mm. And I was, like, and I when I saw you said, like, I think I'm done with this, I was, like, oh, that's awesome because I always <laughs> feel that way. Yeah, uh, I like to approach it like that. Yeah. Yeah, I have a painting right now where it's, like, 99% finished, but it might be finished. I just have no idea. And, mm. the, and I'm waiting till the rest of the paintings for this group of paintings is done. And then I'm, like... If it's if at the end I'm like yeah it's still done then it'll be done but I have a feeling there's something I'm haven't thought about yet mm. oh. yeah yeah you never know it might be finished and it just takes time or yeah. it's one mark yeah exactly yeah. so so how did that start is was it like some big epiphany or did you just start oh, like man how much time do we have it's such <laughs> a long boring I'm story of time. <laughs> it, uh, you know it it. How did it start? Like, yeah, I did that series with the comic books, and then I did another series after that with gas masks. Yeah, and like mm-hmm. little kids yeah, and stuff. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and then it was after that, like, I don't know, I just got really kind of depressed for a bit, like about the work, because mm-hmm. I, I just wasn't happy about it. And so I kind of went on this long road of thinking, and um, I had to, like, erase in my head, like everything that I thought about artwork and all these preconceptions and kind of go down to the bare bones of like what I like Mm -hmm. first. And then I came down to cave art. I don't know why. I just, I love cave art. It's my favorite art Hmm. on the planet. And so I kind of started from there and then worked forward. And then somehow I I came, Oh no, that's what it was. What I realized is like, cause I couldn't figure out like what, so it was my motivator for making art because everybody's is so different. Right. So the cave art specifically was that – do you – because like for me, I'm also kind of obsessed with the cave art. But it's almost just like the fact that we can kind of stand in a human being's foot and like experience – like almost put yourself in their place. You know, like mm-hmm. like it's like you're standing there and you're like, why the fuck would he create art? He has these saber-toothed tiger Ex- Yeah, Yeah, that was mm-hmm. exactly yeah. it. It was like, why of all the things that you had to do at that time and how scarce food was, right. your life was literally always on the line. Yeah. And then you see some of these caves, like how they had to crawl through. Mm-hmm. And so I, that's what got me hooked. And then for me, one day it just hit me. I was like, because that's being human. Right. Yeah. And it's as simple as that. There's no big secret. For it's like, sure. Making art is part and parcel to being human. Yeah, exactly. And that kind of kick-started me as, like, got me excited about art again. And it's weird because that's kind of been my motivator for make, making art since then isn't mm-hmm. because this thing, like, I have to or I love colors or I love landscape. It's that I'm just curious why we even do it. Right, So yeah. that's why I do it. And that got me into um, – oh, you know, it was, it was Xiao Ming, actually. It was like something – then I started going through all these things, like, just – filtering through everything I've learned and read. And then it was one teacher had told us, um, he's like, he asked it as a question. It was like a very Zen thing of like, mm-hmm. why do you think all the great artwork is figurative? Mm-hmm. And, you know, we were supposed to debate it. I didn't say anything, but I, <laughs> so I just thought about that. I'm like, why is it like, when, what's the most, like the thing that we're most obsessed with and it's portraits, it's mm-hmm. busts, it's, and it could be for a myriad of reasons. It's an egotistical thing. It's a political thing. It's a beauty thing. Right. Um, so that's where like that all came together, but I didn't want to do portraiture, like things that were recognizable. Mm-hmm. And so here's a weird disconnect, like a connect that seems so far away. But then I saw this documentary. I always recommend it to everybody. It's called how art made the world. Mm. And there's art a snippet the of this. Um, I think he's a, a type of neurosurgeon. He works with um, amputees because he studies uh, phantom limb syndrome. Oh, mm-hmm. Okay, it seems so unrelated, but <laughs> his name's uh, V. S. Ramachandran, and so he's also like on the side. He's an art lover, so he wanted he started studying the psychology of art, hmm. and so 
God, it's such a long story. Bear with me. This is awesome. I'm he, really enjoying this. He part. found this study in the 50s, right, that um, there's a – there's a uh, what the hell type of bird is it? I think like a pelican or something. They're called a red stripe pelican. Mm-hmm. And on their beak, they have a single red stripe. Huh. So, But they didn't know what the red stripe was for. So they um, – one scientist noticed that one of the chicks was pecking on this red stripe on the mother, and the mother then would feed it. Mm. So they're like, wait, is this like a hunger thing? So they took a, a popsicle stick and they painted red stripes on them, but they would make the stripe bigger and bigger and bigger. And the bigger the stripe, the like these chicks would go ape shit over it. Like they mm. put a big red stripe and they're on a yellow popsicle stick and they're like, they're like going nuts. Wow. So there was a correlation between that. So he started thinking of that in the terms of abstract art. Mm-hmm. So he did these studies and of how the brain responds and lights up to abstract and not just abstract, but like exaggerated art. So even Mm. figurative. So when you think of it, like mannerism or, um, you know, any type of religious art, anything that's Mm -hmm. not photorealistic, that has exaggerated limbs, exaggerated eyes. Okay. The brain responds differently to it than Mm -hmm. it does, um, in in like a photorealistic or, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so that really got me thinking of like, I started responding more to abstract art. So that was a whole thing that I was, putting these two ideas together of like we respond to portraiture, you know, the human head for whatever reason. Well, we know why, Mm. but I wanted to do it in a way where not so much that it's just that you can, the least amount of information to know the person, but it's more of the least amount of information to have a reaction to another human head. If that makes any sense, Mm. because the less, I feel like the less you leave out, the more you invite that viewer to come in and bring their story to it. If you put right. a lot of information, so if I just do a full painting of you, somebody walks up and they go, hey, that's Josh. Yeah, I remember Josh. Right. He gave me a beer once. <laughs> you know, and they have a little story. A couple of beers. <laughs> the story. He got me really drunk once. <laughs> um, that's the Josh I know. <laughs> yeah. But if it's this very faint thing, then the, there's less information you're giving them. You're giving them more or less like a platform. And then they can come to it and bring their own emotion or their own experience or something to it. And that also came from then uh, an experience I had with Rothko's work. And I know that's most people can't stand Rothko. (laughs) And I was like that too because of school. Mm -hmm. That was another school thing is to hate. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Rothko was like the devil. And uh, (laughs) I had this experience. It was when I was out of school for a few years. And I was at the, I think it was the Philadelphia uh, Museum of Art. And it was like, a free day and nobody was there mm-hmm. and I didn't even want to look at Rothko's work. I was just <laughs> tired and the only bench was in front of a Rothko painting. <laughs> yeah. So I sat there and it's almost embarrassing to admit it. I sat there for like 15, 20 minutes and all of a sudden I got kind of emotional. Mm-hmm. I was like, what's going on with me? Like, <laughs> yeah. And it was the painting. Like I, I sat there for probably 45 minutes just looking at this Rothko and I just became this huge fan afterwards mm-hmm. of this really idea cool. of just very little information being able to, just communicate you know mm. with somebody so it's a mix of all those things but mostly it was the ideas of that guy that vs ramachandran I mean, it's amazing the things he's mm. come up with that how exaggeration can you know it triggers things in the brain and mm. communicates that's awesome have you been able to look at other art that you appreciate with that in mind and try and figure out how that relates to it at all Sure. I mean, when you think about it, when you really start looking, almost all art is like that. Like when I was mm-hmm. at the Dorsey, I was looking at um, Ong. I mean, okay. everything is so curvilinear and exaggerated. Yeah. Even like, to an extent, Bouguereau or, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, I could see that. There's, definitely Ong. Yeah, yeah definitely mm-hmm. Ong. And some more than others. And then until you get to somebody like Vermeer, who we know was using a camera obscura, mm-hmm. there's some stylization. And I think even within his theories – stylization works within that um, framework of exaggeration because it's just not real. Oh, okay. You know, so. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a lot of truth to that. Huh. That's awesome. Other, th- other than, um, I mean, as far as the cave, back, going back to the cave paintings, is, does that also like, because I also kind of get like this primitive of like, or like, um, I don't know how to explain it, just like a, uh, I guess primitive uh, way of like how you paint stuff. Like it feels like very much like a fucking, I don't know. This kind of sounds like an asshole. I'm like, I'm like, you know, like a fucking caveman being like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, nah, that's, uh, I take it back. Actually, I put on fur. Yeah. 
Yeah, you sit in a cave. That's why I grew a beard. <laughs> I light a little fire. Yeah, yeah. You have a you have like uh, people can't see you right now, but you have a bone that goes through your yes, no- nostrils. Yes, I, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, I think so to to an extent. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I mean, maybe a little bit, but a lot. To, but I guess what, what I was trying to ask it was like, does the uh, cave man, the love for like that cave art, does that does that other than um, kind of trying to uh, break down the reasoning why humans paint to begin with. Does that, does the, does them or whatever influence your art in any other ways? I think maybe just like in basics of, um, like use of line and tone, mm-hmm. I think, you know, the, but I, I kind of, I don't do outline as well. I've started doing more contour outlines, but I think that's the only other thing is, hmm. is cause that, there was an, see, there's so many weird unrelated things that come into play. So I, remember I read this other book that was like an instruction manual from like the thirties <laughs> mm-hmm. and it was on painting. And like the first page was like breaking down. Like you said, this is the vocabulary for an artist. <laughs> you have a line, <laughs> you have tone, but the way it was laid out, like no one ever said it like that. And I was like, wow, that's a really interesting. Like, cause we think of the way we learned it is right. like you put them on top of each other. You have the line, which is your drawing. Then you paint over it usually, mm-hmm. right. you know, more or less. More or less, yeah. Yeah. And, but it's like, oh, what if you like separate them then in more like an abstract approach? And that's probably what every abstract artist was doing. I just didn't really understand abstract at the time. So it was like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. well, I'll have a linear mark and then just a swatch here because you look at some of those bisons and they'll be like this red, you know, streak. And then they'll have the contour of right. you know, how to charcoal. So mm. even then they were using that same vocabulary. So that, I mean, I don't know if it makes any sense. That was the relations like, okay, I want to use that, but in more of an abstract way with kind of realist mm. imagery. That's awesome. Mm. I, I, I always wonder, um, this might sound really stupid, but uh, because, you know, we have these cave, cave paintings, but I always wonder because I think music is kind of one of those other things I, I wonder about as well. I'm like, you know, music and art are, seem to be these two things that human beings do, but kind of don't make any sense. But they, I mean, they do, but, uh, but you're like, why would you ever do it? And I'm always wondering if there's some fucking like caveman drummer who just, his, his drum is fucking not there anymore. <laughs> <I'm so> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's it's not like a it's not like a thought out thing. I'm just always like, I wonder what other art forms like. Was there like some fucking like form of music they had? You know, like chants or something. Where oh sure yeah. Where we can't we we don't get to uh, you know like because that's also an obsession I have with the cave paintings. It just like things in general that seem to be of uh, like uh, of these like ancient times and the art forms of it is that humans leaving their mark. You know uh, mm-hmm. and and that's the great thing about artwork, at least uh, some. <clears throat> but uh, but like the m- music is very like of the moment, right? So so you you don't get to like put that. I mean, you can now, I guess, put in like a CD or a fucking flash drive and stow it away in a cave, I guess. But <laughs> <laughs> but but as far as like older than days, like the caveman times, we we have no. Uh, idea of the music or assuming they made it I mean. well they did I, I don't know how old but i know one of the oldest um instruments they found was a bone flute that's hmm. so they know they were making music but yeah that's the i think the coolest thing it's almost like a goldsworthy sculpture it's like mm-hmm. we have no it because they didn't write down music so right. we have no idea what it was they have yeah. i think one of them they're showing had like three holes and so they can tell like what notes they had available, mm-hmm. but outside of that, you don't know what they were. I mean, who yeah, knows? It could have just been garbage. Like, <laughs> you know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. we want to think it was something beautiful and yeah, ethereal. It's some little kid's toy. Yeah, but yeah, it was some kid. Yeah, just making <laughs> fart sounds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know. Or maybe it was like Led Zeppelin. <laughs> yeah, it could have been they something were, amazing. They were having these fucking caveman fucking. <laughs> Concerts, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. They they the wrote women. cashmere before Led Zeppelin. Did <laughs> yeah, and, you know, cave women were getting their boobs signed. Mm-hmm. It was, <laughs> it's a different time. <laughs> uh, we were talking the other day about um, sculpture and, and statues and and sort of what will be left behind. And yeah. uh, the subject of Mount Rushmore came up. Yeah, and we we're like, what? Because that will be one of the few things left behind when America's long gone. Yeah. And you, you, that's our, look at we, it. we were saying that's our sphinx. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah. Like they'll look at it and be like, 
they worship these old men or old whatever. white guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then we were like, "What? What do you think they'll think about like because uh, it's um, Roosevelt's on there and, and he, he has his glasses." Oh, and right. like, "Well, glasses probably won't exist anymore." <laughs> so will they be like? what were these weird metal contraptions they put on their face or what was up with those things around his <laughs> yeah. face? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's funny to think about that being our, what we leave our know, legacy. Yeah, yeah. Our Sphinx, our mysterious sculptures that, and then we went in a whole like <laughs> gigantic sculpture search <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to see what else we're leaving behind. Yeah. Uh, and just kind of thinking about like, how long do you think it'd take before the, uh, before Lady Liberty crumbles and all that good stuff. and Oh, yeah. Because I know, like, stone is, like, the one that, like, lasts really. Like, you know, like, Goldsworthy, his work will, like, really last a long time. At least some of it. Well, some. Some of it he's, like, purposefully making to, to you know, end. With yeah, it's supposed to be about time. Yeah, yeah. So, so his stuff will probably be around forever. But, or at least some of it. But, or at least a long time. <laughs> Going on another rent. Or Rodans. <laughs> some Rodans yeah. in that marble. Oh, yeah. Or bronze may last. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. So it's it's cool to think that way. I need to go cave hunting so I can have some stuff that lasts. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. And in the graffiti world, that's kind of like a big uh, thing. Like I always used to date my stuff. And it was with the idea that you can like look back and you're like, wow. Like, first of all, if, if the thing ever lasts, you know, if you, you know, someone might take a picture of something, you're like, oh, crazy. And then you see the date, and you're like, oh, that was 10 years ago. That, that time flew by, you know? Mm. Yeah. And so, uh, I, but most of graffiti stuff is very temporary. And it's kind of like the, with the mindset you go into it, it's like, it's all going to go away at some point. <clears throat> but you also date it because you're kind of obsessed with how long things will last and, and, uh, you know just time and all that good stuff. At least for me, I, I will explain that to some people. Like I have this graffiti friend. I explained why I did that. Why I was dated. Cause he's like, I'm like, Oh yeah, I got to date it. And then he was like, yeah, I don't do that. And I explained it. And then after that, he was like, oh, I, I date my stuff now all the time. Like, mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. You just get obsessed with it. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it's necessarily bad. <clears throat> so, uh, okay, let's go to, but I, we, you know, we've been breaking down paintings. Oh, it's this segment. <laughs> yeah, we tried to. F- we want to break down this painting. The colors on this uh, online file, like they somehow like made them incorrect. Because uh, it's a little desaturated. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know why. No. Uh, oh, it's a Google. It was because we were trying to find the biggest file. Feels possible. so weird. Uh, oh, escaping the life. Yeah, they're cool. Uh, yeah, and it's weird because when you look at it on Google Images, like right there, the colors are correct. Huh. But then when you click on it, 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 it like uh, desaturates. I'm pissed. <laughs> yeah, I want my money back. You Should see, be. See Wait, who's one? that weird? What what showed up? Oh, is that the football player with the last name Woods? Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> but you, you can see Lentz. it here. You see how this one's like yellow? And, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, That's so weird. we wanted to talk about this painting specifically. Uh, hopefully you don't hate this painting. <laughs> no, no, I liked that one. Uh, I mean, th- this is us veering away from your uh, the heads, your heads and stuff. But you did, you did all these like uh, people in subways. Hmm. Um, and I think this was you were you were in uh, New York at the time. Is that correct? When you yeah. took all these photos? Yeah, I was in New York last year. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I I was really like into these paintings when you were doing them. I was like, fuck, that's oh, cool as hell. And I I really. I don't know. I just really liked them. Uh, and, and it was crazy how much it was one of those things I think you're really good at where you do these groups of people and you barely put, like if you zoom into their face, it's pretty much just this abstract um, thing. But then you pull away and it's obviously a person sitting on a, on a, you know, bench or whatever. <clears throat> and uh, I, I was very curious uh about just the like it seems like you do these portraits and then you do these groups of people out in public you were doing those like walking people you know those people mm, yeah. like, walking yeah for a good amount of time and then you you did these and uh, i i was wondering like if there is um if there's some because i noticed that both have to do with people in motion mm-hmm. but these people are in motion 
but they're not, you know, like they're, they're, they're on a train, so it's moving, but yeah, they're in transit, but they're, they're going somewhere. And then the uh, groups of people walking, obviously they're walking. So I was like, I wonder if there's something behind that or if he's just, he's just really trying to like capture people in their, in their environment or something. <clears throat> I don't know if you want to talk about that or if there's anything in no, no i don't okay no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> moving on yeah uh, so. next question <laughs> no yeah yeah no that's absolutely i don't know why i mean a lot of things for me i i don't understand why i'm interested in them until afterwards and then mm-hmm. I'll generally find a through line mm-hmm. and um i don't know i just have a fascination with with people like like i think a, the when we wrote the um artist statement for this i, I worded it a bit better because it's kind of the uh, second thing i did oh sorry yeah, yeah. um and it was this thing of just I I'm, I don't know why but I'm fascinated about that point between A and B hmm. when people are in one spot they're going to another there's that area in between it that became really fascinating to me hmm. and I think it, a lot of times like when I do these I, I notice I'm always also in a certain frame of mind like at that time when I was in New York I spent a handful of months there and um, it was just kind of a, a transition time for me. Mm-hmm. And I literally spent every day. I didn't paint at all, and for months I just got up and I walked around New York all day and took photos. Mm-hmm. And I would do that day after day after day for months. Hmm. And I wound up with tens of thousands of photos. And they weren't all like this, but I think just that correlation was that's the mode my brain was in. Like it was in this searching phase in between A and B. So I think you just tend to gravitate to the things that are in the same mind frame. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know the subways are just fascinating, like the they weirdest, are. craziest shit happens like a, down there. Yeah, they're like a little ecosystem. Yeah, and it's weird. It became interesting to me because it was a very it, in when you're in that spot, like from an A to a B, it's a really vulnerable spot to be mm-hmm. in. Like even like coming here from where I was at my house, and now I'm here. I'm in a stationary thing. We have a concrete thing going on, but in between there, anything could have happened. I thought yeah. about a million things on the way here. That area to me is very fascinating. Um, mm. and so that's what I built like the show off of. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm. Yeah. I, I, I remember I was listening to a podcast and it was, um, it was, it's called very bad wizards. It's the, it's these two professors. I think one's does philosophy. I forget what the other one does. <clears throat> they were breaking down, uh, the, the, you know, like, um, someone that might hit someone on their way home from work and stuff like that. And just mm. the, the sheer, luck or unluck of the events that happened to you. Uh, it was, it was about free will. Uh-huh. Uh, they were talking about free will and the lack thereof in their opinions. And they were saying that, you know, you can uh, like, I think they talked about like people driving home like drunk or something like that and killing someone. And they were saying that the, the percent of people that drive home drunk, I mean, I'm not pro drunk people driving, but but the, they were saying that, you know, you, you might get lucky or someone might, you know, it, it's the variables that it takes for something bad to happen. There's so much that is outside of your hands. Like if someone decided to cross the street at that time versus them crossing the street 10 seconds later because they happened to, you know, forget their keys in their house or something like that. And they started breaking down all these things. I know. And I keep and I always think about that and just or I've been thinking about that recently and just kind of what you were saying, the the things that are unexpected that can happen while you're in transition or. Yeah. Yeah. And that's part of the vulnerability. I mean, when I'm saying vulnerability, that's on multiple levels. There is that. Yeah. The physical vulnerability, there's an emotional vulnerability. Mm, Yeah. yeah, For sure. Anything can happen or even, you know, I became fascinated with, because I spent so much time just riding subways and shooting photos. Like, there's other weird things how you have, you know, it's a, this social thing. We're all going somewhere, but nobody looks each other in the eye. Right. Like you're the weirdo. If you yeah. look at somebody, right. You know, it's weird, unwritten rules, the way that we act that just everybody. And, but if you have the one person who's looking you in the eye or maybe talking, right. like, that's the crazy one. Move away. Like, yeah, for sure. So it becomes its own little society for one minute or yeah. two minutes that you're going to that destination. Yeah, for sure. And, and the subway is also a, a place where, uh, it's just, a huge like a uh, spectrum of like classes so there can be yeah. like, a very wealthy person and then the homeless guy that's like shit face drunk and asleep on the bench or whatever you know and it's like he's the lowest place you could probably be in your life and then you have yep. like this guy like 
who's you know quote unquote su- as successful as you could be right yeah, now. So it could be like a Wall Street banker. Yeah. Next. Yeah. I, there was mm. a, 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 I met a friend out there, an artist, and we were going. Um, I think we were going to a Louche Gallery or something. We hopped on the subway, and the first car we went in, we ran in there because there was nobody in there. I'm like, God, let's go in this car. We should have known. It was rush hour. <laughs> we run in, and it smelled like a dead body. And we look over, and there's a guy just laying on the bench. I thought he was dead. Holy so shit. we just ran out, and we went into the next car, and we're looking through the window, and everybody kept doing the same thing. Mm. And then it like hit us. We started moving. We're like, what? what is wrong with us? We're a human being. That guy smells like he's dead, right. and no one is going to help him. Then we're looking... And then he moved his head a little. I'm like, okay, he's not dead yet. <laughs> and then we look, and you can see his foot was swollen. It was like it had gangrene. Oh, so oh, he shit. was like rotting. Uh-huh. He was a homeless guy. Yeah. And it felt terrible. Like I did nothing. Mm-hmm. Nobody did anything. And yeah, we're looking around the car. Like there's people, the wealthy people. There's people yeah. like us. And then here's this other human being that nobody even wants to go near. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People are almost vomiting. You know, yeah, people that's that got stuck in that car. So you just don't want to. I think one of the big things with that is you just don't want to inherit that guy's problems. You know, you're like, hmm. you almost are like, well, if I try to help him, then that's gonna ruin my day, and I gotta take like time to like talk to like the ambulance. But isn't that crazy? Yeah, I mean, you're I, right, I, but yeah, it's yeah. fucking crazy. Yeah, it's crazy for sure. That's that's hmm. you're working out this like you're almost talking yourself out of helping another human being. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 It's, it's oh, we do it all the sad. time. If you're driving and you see somebody pull up on the side of the road, you're like, I shouldn't know because there's crazy people out here and you can murder me. Yeah. Yeah. You keep going. You just don't yeah. want to take on those problems. Yeah, I, I, I remember I picked up a hitchhiker once. <clears throat> His name was Whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a blues song. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's even funny because he had a puppy and his dog's name was Dog. Whiskey and Dog. Yeah. Dude, that's awesome. And it, I was like, I was like, what? Your, your dog's name is Dog? He was like, no, Dog. Like, do- like he said it like I don't care. Dog? Like, Dog. You know, like like you would say as a blues like musician. Like D-A-W-G. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, he, he did not smell that good. Let's just say this. Uh, me and my buddy, me and my cousin, we were working, uh, on the coast, uh, at this job we had for like three days just doing physical labor. We were doing like fencing or something like that. And then um, he was on the side of the road. We picked him up and we drew, we were like on an hour and a half drive and he was kind of just going wherever he wanted. And it was really cold that day and I could not bear the smell. So like we did a good deed, but I just couldn't, I couldn't smell it cause it was just bad. So I had the window down. I was just freezing the entire drive. Hmm. But, um, I mean, he was a cool guy. He just, I mean, he was just homeless, you know, so he yeah. smelled. I mean, it, it it happens when you don't have access to a shower. That's just yeah. how it works. So yeah. it sucks. But, I mean, he was cool. And, you know, he got somewhere new. He was just traveling. He was like a traveling guy. I mean, we I ran into, I've ran into a good amount of homeless people doing graffiti because that's kind of like where you lurk at night or sure. if yeah. you want. Yeah. So uh, I've had conversations with a lot of them and they're, seem to be really good guys you know they just you know for the most part i I don't know all their shit but definitely you know good enough to treat them as human beings yeah but yeah i mean let's get back to this fucking painting we went on a weird (laughs) (laughs) whiskey and dog so the painting the painting we're looking at is called whiskey and dog whiskey and dog (laughs) that's the new title (laughs) shout out shout out to whiskey and dog (laughs) Uh, uh, this painting is called don't need that ending till it's time. Uh, I, I was going to ask you about that too. I, I've noticed like a lot of your paintings have like these very, they, they, they have these titles where I'm like, fuck, I'm trying to figure this out. Like, you know, like, <laughs> like yeah. it, it, I, and, uh, I usually, whenever I title a painting, I'll try to kind of give the, uh, the viewer like a helping hand in cracking my code or whatever. Uh-huh. And I was like, I wonder if there's something he he's telling me that I can't figure out. It, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, there is for sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. with, with the, I change like how I title paintings, like with every body of work. Um, and this one is another thing. I don't, I think we just, cause we cut out in the artist statement, but I had it in there originally. And, um, there was a, a band I was listening to. This old band I loved back from the 90s called Swell. They were out of San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And the guy was a great lyricist. So when a lot of the ones that I chose to paint, I was listening 
to a particular song at the time. I was going to ask you that too, if it's because they seem they look li- like song lyrics. Yeah, they're like song. Yeah. yeah, and so it's not just that like that was the song I was listening to. The story within the song, there was something that clicked with that moment. So it's kind of I thought of them as like a like a extra feature almost. You know, like right. if you actually listen to the song, it kind of works as a soundtrack. That's awesome. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah, it. that's awesome. And uh, and because they're really, it's not. It's it's a kind of acoustic music. Um, Really low fi mm. and you didn't you didn't want to use Tracy Chapman fast car uh, not, <laughs> not in particular there was copyright issues I tried to contact her uh, um, I was going to use Taylor Swift yeah initially yeah um, but no so there's there's it kind of adds just like an, another I guess dimension to it a little bit yeah and then another thing I wanted to ask you about was because I noticed a lot of your paintings that you even showed on your Instagram you'll have like the painting then you'll kind of zoom into this paragraph. And I was always wondering, like, if, if that paragraph is um, something you personally write, because I noticed sometimes the words are misspelt in it. Yeah, those were um, – because I was keeping a journal mm-hmm. um, the whole time. Mm-hmm. And um, so it was usually, like, things from that day, like something – it could have been something that happened in that subway or just another thing, like another weird story. Because when I was in New York – um, I was like, I would do Airbnbs or I'd crash on people's couches or mm-hmm. see old friends. So a lot of weird shit happened. Mm-hmm. So I was just keeping these really long journal <laughs> entries and I was writing them in my sketchbook. So then when I got back, I bought a typewriter and I typed them out mm-hmm. and, um, uh-huh. yeah, the typewriter was kind of fucked up. So it'd be misspelled. And I kind of mm-hmm. just, it, it got, um, I left them in cause I liked this idea. Like I really, the last like couple years, um, became really obsessed with Basquiat. It's one of my favorite artists right now. Huh. And I like this this idea, like when you look at his work when he'd write words and then scratch them out, mm-hmm. um, it's this idea of like addition by subtraction. And, and he had this like, thing he said about it that by s- like scribbling out a letter or a word in some way makes it more important. It brings more attention right. to it. So there mm-hmm. comes that addition by subtraction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that wasn't the intention. I didn't intentionally go out without the typewriter, but the first few times I was like, ah, oh, fuck man. And I had to do it over again. And then I was like, I kind of liked that idea of mm. it being fucked up. It added something else to it. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So it was kind of another way of approaching that. So I just left him. Yeah. Like, that's cool. Like that. <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, I'm horrible at spelling, like really, really bad. And there's been a couple of times, especially like my older stuff, I used to have like words and stuff in it more often. And people were like, oh, do you know you spelt that wrong? And I, and <laughs> yeah, I, um, I did it on purpose. Do. Yeah, <laughs> they, they would always ask me that. Oh, did you mean to miss? Do you did you mean to do that? And I would say no, but like I really like that that's misspelled because it kind of gives people a clue of how bad I spell things. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like a it's like an extra. It's like the one thing that's about me in the painting or something. <laughs> that's a good way of looking at yeah. it. It's yeah. honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I never lied. I was never like, yeah, yeah, I'm genius. Like, yeah. <laughs> look deeper. Think yeah. about it. Think like, about how I spelt that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that's awesome. So, so, so um, the other thing is, I, I just kind of want to explain this to the people watching. We have these two people sitting on a bench. They have two people next to them, but you can't really see them. It's definitely two main subjects. And then there's a bar separating the two and kind of framing them, I guess. Um, they definitely look like strangers to each other. Yeah. One's on a mm-hmm. phone. So, uh, I mean, we all know how that is I mean, mm-hmm. when you're when, you, when you're on the subway. She's checking her likes. It's almost, <laughs> it's, it's almost weirder that the other person isn't looking at their face. <laughs> yeah, right. I like that. Yeah. 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 It's... Uh, but yeah, and then so, so, so did, when you were kind of, I mean, you're you're taking these pictures on the subway, correct? And then, and then you're working from the picture. Is that correct? Or- Mostly, some I did, and then I would break away, like work from memory, mm-hmm. um, or I would kind of make stuff up. Mm. You know? mm. Yeah, and uh, was it more like what? What would? Why would you choose a certain picture? Was it just something kind of? really spoke to you or or i mean were there any like sort of formal compositional sort of things that came yeah, into it yeah, yeah of course <laughs> yeah. Then you, just, you just kind of like don't want to talk about that stuff like, we'll see yeah. the balance and then the yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i mean it, it, it's i think it's the same for I everybody to get deep right? into it right. but i yeah. do want to yeah i mean there are i mean it's i think you have to have that that in your little bag of tricks or whatever for sure I mean, composition is <laughs> the most important thing so for See me, like some first, rule of thirds going on in there. But. Yeah, there's a little uh, golden section in there too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, um, you, you 
one of the things I I don't know this this might sound really stupid, but what's new? The um, <laughs> the I was like when you were doing these, I would always be so into the pipe. Like the pipe going down the middle or whatever. I'd be like, "Fuck, I, I don't know why, but I'm just so into these like poles that are in the that are in in the subways and how he's painting them. They're just so simple, but I'm like, damn, I love those. They're fun to paint. Yeah, yeah. they they look like it. Yeah. Um, I mean, that, that has nothing to do with breaking down the paintings, but our <laughs> our critique is that we hate it. So cool. Right. <laughs> uh, also, I I don't know if you were doing this before then, or you. It seemed like in New York you started like adding this collage, mm-hmm. like part to your painting. Was that like a big breakthrough for you? Like, were you like, oh, I really want to like start incorporating this, or or were you inspired by anything? Or? It was a little of both. Like, I've been the last couple of years, I've gotten uh, more and more into photography on its own, mm-hmm. um, and been wanting to find a way to incorporate it somehow in a painting. Um, and I'd started doing like going back to like talking about how, you know, doing other work on the side that you don't post. Like I do yeah. a right. fair amount of collaging. Like I got into collage work. Oh, cool. Um, and then being out there, like in New York, you know, when you see these billboards, like my two favorite things actually in New York, we're seeing like, you know, those billboards that just get layered over time mm-hmm. and people tear things yeah, down. Right. It's like a time capsule. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then, um, just doors and alleyways where people sticker and graffiti uh-huh. and you see it like, it can be like half an inch thick, which shit yeah, on there, sure. you know? And, um, I, I, that was, I guess my takeaway from, from New York. I just, that was like, Oh, okay. I've been doing these collages. I really like that feel. So mm. somehow they can kind of come together That's you know, awesome. with the, with the imagery. So it was, and then it's that for me, like that one step closer of trying to find a way to, incorporate because there's some of them i don't think this one in particular half the paintings i think do have my own photos in there like collaged in there Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. but no way that i think is very cohesive so it's just one step kind of towards that trying to bring those together yeah there's this place in san francisco called psycho city it's like an old graffiti like haven back in the day and all these like legendary San Franciscans painted it Uh and a lot of people will like go up to wall and like chip at it and you'll get like these like random colors because it's like a I don't know if it's still gray anymore they might have painted something on it now but it used to be a gray wall for a really long time and you could like chip away and you'd you'd get like all these crazy colors and you you know it kind of makes you think of like who whose paint is this you know like yeah like is this Barry did Barry McGee like hold this spray paint? Or, <laughs> you, you you know you, you get these like weird like uh, it's kind of like the caveman thing. You you're standing in the presence of someone that you really that you know you you admire or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's there for some other reason other than putting on. Because isn't it weird? Have you ever thought about this with painting? Like your whole thing is to put something on a wall. Hmm. Yeah. It's a really weird thing when you think about it. Like if yeah. there was no walls, there wouldn't be painters, huh. more or less. And this was interesting about so, graffiti yeah. to me. Is like it it eliminates that whole part of it. I've never been into graffiti. Mm. Um, you know, just that wasn't my background. But right. I love that aspect of it. Is that it completely eliminates that? Because once you make a painting, like what do you do? Your thing is to find a wall to put it on. Somebody right. else's. You know. Yeah. Hopefully, because <laughs> yeah. then there's a transaction, a monetary transaction <laughs> yeah. involved. Yeah. But for the most part, we just put things on walls. Huh. Yeah. How dare you? <laughs> I know. I just totally probably haven't. There's no given magic that enough consideration. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, Don't you're quit. right. Yeah. To all our listeners, it's way more than that. It's way deeper. Just look into start. the way I misspelled those <laughs> words. That's my new thing is I'm going to hang my paintings on the, the ceiling. ceiling. Yeah. Nice. I'll be the floor yeah. painter, <laughs> or, or I'll make a bunch of paintings and just pile them up as like a big pile. <laughs> It's probably been done. <laughs> yeah. Probably, I know. It's nothing new, man. I mean, no, that doesn't take away from it, but it is a really weird thing when you think about, like, what's the end game? Of yeah. course, it's it's more of an emotional thing, and there's an right. idea, but when it leaves your hands, it goes onto a wall. Right. right. Yeah. yeah, that goes back to, like, the old cliche, of, like, it's all about the process, you know? Like, Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's at least for me, it's true. Some people, I've, I've heard, like, other people say, like, oh, the fuck the process. It's all about the outcome. I'm like, Oh, really? Yeah. I, you can go either way. Yeah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Where do you stand, Sergio? Yeah, you better be right or else. <laughs> it's a lot of both. Uh, when I was, before I really got into technique and process and everything about that, it was more about like the idea and like make something that looks cool. But right. um, 
doing the process enough times, you start to love certain parts of it and you want to keep refining your technique or learn new processes and you become a nerd about like other people's processes. Like how did they do that? And, um, you find ways to kind of surprise yourself almost Mm -hmm. in, in your process to keep it interesting. And also when you look at other people and when they do something that you don't know how they did, it almost excites you because you're like, Oh, I didn't know that you could do it that way. Or how did they do it that way? Mm -hmm. So it becomes that too. So I look at different art for, um, different reasons in that way. Like I, I just went to this, uh, I didn't even meet, but I mean, in my head, I never even meant in at least how I told myself, I never meant the process as like the way you're explaining it. I always thought of it as just like the act of me doing something. You know, you oh. know what I mean? Like, uh, Oh, it, not so much like a one, two, three, four, just no. the act in itself. Yeah. It's kind of like how, like, I mean, like, like graffiti is like this group activity of, doing something a lot of times, you know, you're mm-hmm. going out with a bunch of buddies and you're experiencing painting on something and then you leave. And then, uh, sometimes it comes out good. Sometimes it comes out bad. Most times bad, but it's, it's just kind of like being in that moment and experiencing it. <clears throat> and then like, I think just the fact of doing it most of the time will, you'll get better at it, but yeah. I'm not trying to focus. I mean, I, I will definitely focus on like how people do things. Yeah. Whenever I think of like the process of doing things, I never think about it in like the terms of like me doing this. I just think of like me, I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of like, it goes back to like the martial arts of things. Like you're not, you're not doing it to get like necessarily to like get a black belt or something. You're just kind of in it and experiencing it. And then, mm-hmm. you know, 10 years later you might get a belt or something, but <clears throat> it's kind of like just enjoying that moment is, uh, so it's the experience for you. Yeah. Yeah. Makes mm. sense. That's what I was thought by the process. I mean, oh, okay. I well, that is the for me. That's part of the experience of doing it is the process yeah. of like the creating it, like fi- figuring out the technique and executing it. Figure out yeah what's the yeah best yeah. like I most just, satisfying way to do it for me. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I just I I'm I'm just saying I've never even thought about it as like the technique of the thing. Oh, really? I always like compartmentalize that part it's like technique Mm. is a whole different thing than the process so it's like a third part for you almost yeah i think so it's like interesting it's like uh like like people enjoy cooking you know and they might suck at it but they (laughs) just enjoy it sure and uh and they might not get better i mean people (laughs) enjoy painting and they might not be that good at it but yeah they just enjoy doing it and i think that's like what i consider the process i might be no I think that's a part of the process. No, I think it's all the process and we're, and that's enough for that. (laughs) (laughs) Done. Done. Okay. We're moving on. (laughs) I'm just kidding. Uh, (laughs) I think I won that one. Okay. Let's go. I think that, yeah, I think when you talking about, so we've been talking about winning arguments and I think if you get the last word, I think that's how technically yeah, you won. You win. Yep, yep. Also, if you're a lot bigger than your co-host, that helps. <laughs> yeah, and you threaten them, but like visually, I'm just like holding, doing the whole like knife to throat, and, and you have all the beers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and the whole you're answer. the real threat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Did did I, did someone say knuckle sandwich? <laughs> um, you're gonna leave here sober if you don't shut up. <laughs> uh, awesome. So yeah, I mean. Uh, so yeah, that, I mean, we've talked enough about a painting, right? So uh, what, what, what do you have like, pl- uh, planned art wise? Trying to put together this new body of work that all that's going to come from being in Paris. So I'll be working on that while I'm there nice. and then to bring them back. And then hopefully if everything goes well, then they'll have them ready for, I think it's, we're going to do it February of next year, 2019. Nice. This is my next show with uh, Hashimoto. Oh, nice. Um, How many shows have you done with them now? Uh, solo shows or all together? Uh, I guess solo shows. I just, this was just my second one. Oh, okay. And yeah. now, oh, so and now all together. I'm just I have no idea. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You've done 14. a ton of group shows. Though, right? <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. We did and now how many shows. shows have you done in total? <laughs> oh shit that's a actually that would be interesting to know but yeah. I have no idea it would be cool yeah, if, you, know if you rain man that real quick <laughs> yeah. well I guess I could just go to my website it's on the CV so oh. I could just count them all <laughs> wow you actually um, I update, update my CV <laughs> wow. I do oh, nice. yeah. doing better than I am <laughs> yeah nice. I, I, well I don't do it religiously but mm-hmm. every once in a while I go through I have everything written down so mm. 
Yeah, awesome. I, I still update that stuff. Nice. That's cool. That's yeah. good. So I'm just excited about that, like being able to work in Paris and yeah, that's live awesome. there yeah, and that's get great. immersed in it and yeah. Yeah. see what comes out of that. That's awesome. And you, so you're, you're, uh, you're searching for a studio right now, correct? Yeah. So, so anyone listening yeah. as it leads to a studio? Yeah. All our French listeners. <laughs> and you have a you big French know. listening yeah. base, right? Yeah. The majority of them. The majority? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a t- it's so hard to find studios there, man. I bet. It's crazy expensive. Oh. Um, and it's, but the cool thing is I've met, like even when I was there, um, people are, I mean, I guess a lot of artists are really friendly and cool. And so I've met a lot of people and on social media. So that's I just awesome, be able yeah. to hang out with people. And, yeah, for sure. You know, mm. It's half the fun, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To traveling, sure. you gotta, you gotta meet people. And if you can meet like-minded artists, that's a, for sure. It's a, a plus. Yeah. That's a plus. Or even semi. I like yeah. meeting people that aren't quite like-minded because it's yeah. kind of fun to learn. Yeah. I see guess. a different point of view. I only mm-hmm. like people that think the exact <laughs> 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 For the most part, I do, but uh, I'm a contrarian, so I like to I like to debate with people. Awesome, get a yeah. little friction going. Yeah, and uh, I don't know if you even want to talk about this. I, I mean, we could cut it out, I guess. But the reasoning why you're I mean, there's another reason why you're or a person you're meeting. I don't know if you want to talk about that at all. My relationship, or just like there's another artist I wanted to at least shout her out. The homie uh, Delphine, of course, we'll talk about Delphine. Yeah, yeah it's the whole reason why I'm going there. Yeah, awesome person. So, uh, yeah, this Delphine uh, – oh, God, I'm going to butcher her name now because it's hard to say her last name. Delphine <laughs> Veyrad Dorbe, I guess. Mm, Sorry mm, if I said it wrong. Delphine V on Instagram. Many French listeners will let you know. Yeah, they'll let me right know. Right yeah. 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 yeah I think you caught me off guard, so that's why I can't pronounce it. I'm I think her name, <laughs> her name is pronounced Delphine Cresson. <laughs> She's going to be pissed, man. <laughs> but yeah, you guys know Delphine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you and MJ are friends with her. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, that's the main reason why I'm going there is we're going to be together for three months there. That's awesome. And that's then, uh, yeah, it's cool. I'm really excited, really stoked. She's yeah. awesome. Yeah, mm-hmm. great painter. Check your stuff yeah, out. Yeah, excellent painter. And it's nice to have somebody to work with. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah and she, I, I always feel like Delphine's like, she's so passionate about stuff. Every time I like get, get a moment to talk with her, she's like, and the fucking... And then she'll like go on this like awesome emotional rant. I'm like, that's awesome. Yeah, she's good for the passionate rants. Yeah, I think that's a very French thing. There's a lot like of the a people in future podcast guest. Yeah, oh, you should. Cool. That would be a very. Uh, I'd be super down. Contentious one. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. I know you've painted her uh, a couple times recently. Yeah, which were yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's kind of what made me think about the whole like oh, maybe he's trying to. Uh, to pull back just so much where you're, oh, it's almost like, uh, uh, like it's so l- looking at it. I'm like, Oh, that's Delphine. And you're like, I think I'm pretty sure that's Delphine. Some, some are like very obvious, but others I'm like, I'm pretty sure. I think, yeah, that's gotta be, you know? And yeah. like, cause I don't really know most of the people you paint or pretty much any of them probably except for Delphine. So, so that's what kind of got me in that, that, uh, maybe it's, uh, it's one of those things where, uh, and I think I was also thinking it just might just be one of those things where something unfinished, it kind of, I think you touched on this before, just pulls you in and it, it almost like makes you try to figure out the rest. You know, it's kind of like, uh, mm-hmm. like when a movie, I think we talked about this before where we're like a movie will end without like a happily ever after. And it mm. kind of pulls yeah. your, makes your brain, um, complete the story. And that's uh, sometimes they mean to do that, to, to have you finish and and you kind of get the right the like, it it, it makes you think you know it, it you're not necessarily sitting down and writing how the story ends but you're like, I wonder if they got like uh you know Children of Men you ever seen that oh yeah movie? I love that movie yeah. Yeah. and they kind of leave you there on the boat yeah and you're yeah. Yeah. you're in this mindset of like I think we definitely were more I know visually like oh that's another thing to talk about when you're asking like about things that kind of got me interested in doing like the way I do it um, when I started to like learning about um, how we see and how the brain operates mm-hmm. with, it, with regards to vision. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I have a friend, uh, is really fascinating guy who's, he, he's trying to develop computer programs that algorithms that see like the human eye. Hmm. Um, so we've had some back and forth discussions and the thing that's really interesting about that is because that's how we've developed evolutionarily is, um, like the, the example they always use is like, so why that excites us? Cause if you think about like, um, 
you know, a guy, a, a Neanderthal on the Serengeti or whatever, and there's a big bush, and then he thinks he sees a tiger tail, you know, in one part, mm-hmm. and then he looks in another part through the bush, he thinks he sees an eye, and then he thinks he sees a foot. So our brain has evolved to put things together. Right. Like that, right? Mm-hmm. So we still respond that way. Right. So when you don't give all the information, it's, it literally engages the brain more. Right. The, huh. They've done MRIs. Wow. The brain will light up more. Whereas if you just put a photo in front of somebody, they're like, oh, yeah, interesting. But they can identify everything. Right. So you literally, when you do that, when you're not giving all the information, you are inviting the viewer in to start completing things or putting pictures together. And mm-hmm. it is more interesting in that that's way. why i'm so tired when i see your shows <laughs> yeah, or it just sucks and it's boring <laughs> 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 my brain's just like i'm exhausted my brain but you think like good so drawings like even illustrations are like that right like yeah. you look at some of the classics where it's like a light line then gets darker then gets lighter mm-hmm. it's that same principle right because you're mm-hmm. seeing the gradation and then you don't see a full like if you do a line that has a gradation and then one that's one solid color people are going to go to the one that has a gradation because it has parts that you're piecing together mm-hmm. a little bit more you know yeah, this is sure. how we've evolved you yeah. know or been created depending on what you believe <laughs> <laughs> controversial right uh, uh, contentious Uh-oh. statements <laughs> uh, about time someone say created so now we're back to the truth <laughs> <laughs> We duped you. We're actually a total creationist podcast. <laughs> yeah. It's the Flat Earth Podcast. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Can I tell you about my friend? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, Get hilarious. Josh started on a, a religious, anti-religion rant. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. Do we got enough time? <laughs> I got time. Let's go. Uh, yeah. I was actually thinking, you know, on the way here, I was thinking about that, like with things to talk about. I was like, that would be kind of interesting to have a whole art podcast where you talked about everything else but art. Like debate, <laughs> yeah. I think eventually politics. we'll get there. Yeah, that's kind of yeah. the whole hopes. It's like if we have guests that are repeat, you know, like every we've like already talked about their art, so it's just like, but just hang out and fucking. Yeah, no, I think it's fascinating because I mean, even for most artists, when we hang out with other artists, we don't talk about art. I mean, for the most part, at least I don't. I'm mm. I'm usually just joking around and having yeah. a good yeah. time and right. maybe current events a little bit, but mm-hmm. yeah, but yeah, not religion because I'll just go on. I mean. <laughs> Yeah, I'm very... Re- really yeah. quick, are you for or against? I mean, I'm not against religion. You can believe whatever you want. I'm against more like you pushing your shit on Proselytizing. people. Proselytizing. Okay. So you're not a... Be- well, are you a believer? No, no, no. Okay. No. no. I mean, my I grew up very religious. I actually know the... I feel like I know the Bible more than the average bear by far. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I, I don't I don't believe it. Uh, sorry, Mom. Uh, <laughs> but... um. Uh, but my biggest pet peeve is, you know, like I, I really don't like when people state things as fact, uh, when they're mostly opinions like that really sure. gets under my skin and religion is pretty much that it's just like, this is the truth. And you're like, maybe, I mean, maybe it's not, but like, as far as evidence is concerned, I think it's not. You yeah. Know? Mm. And so the, you're the Sergio, the devout Christian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Guilty and, as church. And no, so, okay, I'm, that's what brings I also together. grew up religious and <laughs> definitely lean more toward Josh's way of thinking for sure in, in that regard. But yeah, I'm more, I don't get it. So like, it doesn't upset me <laughs> as much no. as it seems to upset well, Josh. I don't, I don't think it's upset is the right word. <laughs> I, I just am like, I'm, I love like arguing with people. I love mm. like debates and, one thing I can like get like uh, just because I know so much about it, I can mm-hmm. really get like into it with people that are super religious. I'm like, oh well, you know, and I'll get like into that like whole. Let's figure this out. Let's work that. Let's work out some like uh, right. some ideas and see if mm-hmm. you're still like if I can figure out you know like how your ethics don't align with your book or whatever. You right. Know? Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, and I also just hate when people say things as fact, but I'm like, that's your opinion. Like, yeah. Remember that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's like, you know, I mean, some people say, say, uh, some music suck and uh, some type of music sucks and others will be like, well, I mean, I love it. And you're like, yeah, that's cause that's your opinion. I mean, but when you say that's the best music and all the other music sucks, I'm like, well, I mean. Even if it, even if I agree with you, I yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you just don't like certainties. People say yeah. things. Yeah, I'm the yeah. same way. I'm a Jehovah's Witness, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Glad I, you guys could be here. I, I have some literature for you. <laughs> yeah. That's to say. He came in with a stack of Awake magazines. Yeah. They're called. Wake? They should change it to Woke for sure. Woke? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's funny because, you know, we had the fires out here. Yeah. And, mm. um, I mean, this isn't funny. I'm serious, guys. But um, where I worked is like where it's been highly affected. And I was driving down this road the other day where there's just no houses. And then they had a Jehovah, they have a Jehovah witness like um, church there. Hmm. And it's the one surviving thing on that oh, block. Shit. Hmm. And I was like, fuck, they're using this to the max. Oh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was like, that's it's a miracle. You know, we survived all these non-believers. <laughs> uh, I mean, maybe, maybe they're not saying that. I'm being an asshole, but, <laughs> but yeah, you're yeah. just making the assumption, man. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah. No pun intended. <laughs> uh, I wish that was intended. <laughs> uh, plus Jehovah witnesses don't say Jesus. They say Jehovah. So. Yeah. So false. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not a Jehovah. I got you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, those Jehovah's know the Bible better than me, though. I mm. give them that. You guys win. Yeah. There, <laughs> there's a lot out here. Like, I used yeah. to live oh, yeah. um, around Napa, and mm-hmm. or in Napa, and I'd never had so many Jehovah's Witnesses come mm. to my door in my entire life, anywhere yeah. I've lived. Yeah, That's one yeah, of those things, annoying. too, with, like, those, like, Jehovah Witness and Mormons, they're, like, the nicest people, too. Yeah. I kind of, like, that's why I'm not that anti-religion. I'm just, like, the, the anti-you stating it as fact and pushing it on people. Yeah. But as far as like, I know for sure it helps people. And, you know, you listen like Jordan Peterson and he'll talk about religion in a certain way. And it definitely will make me think about religion, you know, and like in ways people can use it in more of a positive way. But I don't necessarily agree with him in a lot of things, but yeah, I, I agree I, with a lot of what he says. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I really do kind of uh, appreciate him trying to like work at it in like a logical sense where like other people mm-hmm. just like, just believe, you know, where he's like, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, I definitely agree with you on not agreeing with him as much. I mean, I, uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I listened to a lot of Sam Harris. I, I love like, Sam Harris. Yeah, yeah. Me too. And him and Jordan Peterson's podcast, I'm always a letdown because I'm like, fuck, uh, it's so hard to listen to. Did you, have you listened to the Sam Harris with Russell Brand? Yeah. No, not yet. No, <laughs> that was a tough listen. Oh, was so it? Hard. No, so it's a good. No, it's good. It's a good episode. But you're just like because it, it, it's such a contrasting yeah. view of like oh, really? pure logic against no logic. Yeah, <laughs> and it's it's infuriating I'm, and frustrating. Yeah. Pretty sure I know who's the no logic yeah, guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I I actually really enjoyed that one because sometimes Sam Harris will have people that. 100 like not 100 percent, but they really agree about things you know yeah and sometimes i find that hard to listen to oh mm-hmm. it's boring yeah. Yeah. yeah no no it's a good i mean it's a good yeah. episode but it's tough sometimes it's yeah. like come on dude like quit your consciousness babble yeah. and mm-hmm. there's yeah. just so many like logical fallacies that he yeah. run russell brand is who i'm talking about and yeah. i love russell brand and i love yeah. listening to him but it's yeah. like come on man yeah it's and he, sam harris and just, you you can also it. tell that he has these like these these argument, these points of argument that he's already yeah. thought of before. So he's when, ready. Yeah. When it comes to, he, he's not even in the conversation. He's like, and I have this to prove that yeah. you're wrong. Yeah. And then Sam Harris will like instantly go like, well, let me just break this down. And like some analogy I'll think of. And yeah. you're just like, yeah, you nailed it. Like, yeah, you know, it's, yeah. It's, and that's it's, because that's what's entertaining about Brent. Because when you see him like on Fox News or with people mm-hmm. you don't like, right. it's fucking hilarious because he does that intellectual gallop right. where you can't keep up and yeah. you're laughing your ass off. But then when you're trying like to really make a point, like with Sam here, you're just like, dude, just calm down for a second. Yeah. <laughs> Slow your roll. Yeah. yeah. It, it is. Uh, but it's a great listen. You guys need to go. If you haven't, if you don't listen to Sam Harris, you got to go listen to that man. He's <laughs> sexiest he's, white he's, man's voice ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. He's like, he's like, so, a, a, Sergio's pushing for it. Cause I feel like Sergio's kind of similar. He's like, yep, yep. I'm going to 100% agree with that. One. <laughs> what? <laughs> Cause uh, you guys have like very, uh, similar patterns of how you guys talk. I think. Oh, do they? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> Except for he never says uns or, uh, he's like, uh, oh, he's yeah. a, yeah, he's, he's a, a great he's a speaker wizard yeah. with that. And I love, he's so good too. It almost, I think works to his detriment when you'll see him like on Fox news or like major news outlets, mm-hmm. the way he can just, 
remove emotion right. from himself, yeah. which is yeah. what you want to do. Uh-huh. But you also kind of look like a psycho at the same time. Yeah, a little bit. Like, he <laughs> never gets upset. You just talk, talk like this, and I don't really think that's yeah. it. Yeah. You're like, man, you're like a sociopath. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's definitely not like the best format to showcase him on the yeah, soundbite sure. little. Yeah, he's, he's not a soundbite guy. Yeah, at all. <laughs> there, there was a that that podcast I had mentioned earlier, the Angry Wizards, or uh-huh. the, the Very yeah. Bad Wizards. That's they, where you found out about. Yeah, they were you know, on through his Sam podcast, Harris, right? And you could. That's where I heard it before. It was from yeah. Sam Harris. Okay, yeah, and yeah. they're they're friends, and that was like one of the cool ones because you kind of get this like. You kind of get a vision of Sam Harris that's not the vision, the the Sam Harris everyone knows. You know, like they'll they'll say like dick jokes on his podcast and uh, and, yeah. <laughs> and things like that, and <clears throat> it'll just kind of like pull him out of Sam Harris being Sam Harris. <laughs> yeah, uh, and because you know that's there. Because the thing I also love about Sam Harris is how he's not afraid. Like most of those people in like the atheist movement or whatever, the science right. movement, this are afraid to talk about drugs. Right. And he'll yeah. just come out and be like, yeah, I had psychedelic experiences yeah. when yeah. I was younger. Yeah. So I'm like, I know there's dick jokes in there. Come on, <laughs> yeah. Just let him out. If you took mushrooms. Hey, he has a sense of humor. He'll make these like really super dry jokes every so yeah. often. Yeah, yeah. So he has to have yeah. something that somewhere buried under. Or him and that. a fellow <laughs> nerd will, uh, uh, will say some like super obscure, very intellectual joke. And I'm like, I, They'll both like chuckle right. to each other. I'm like, all right, nerds. Let's yeah, nerd <laughs> joke. Nerd. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like yeah, but ogre I from Revenge of the Nerds. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a classic. Uh, nerds. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'm pretty excited to see uh, the French stuff. Yeah, the sure. French stuff. Thanks. Man. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. I'm excited. Yeah, I mean, I I always just kind of enjoy your stuff. I mean, you definitely work out my brain a lot. Cause I'm I I just I I'm we talked about it before. Where we're, I'm really into unfinished work, and I think Sergio agreed. Or mm-hmm. We both agree with yeah. that or whatever. But uh, I think for the reason that that you talked about earlier, where you, the brain is more stimulated when you yeah. have to put the puzzle together in your Head. Yeah, and I just mm-hmm. think it even visually just looks cooler to me. Yeah, uh, because I think on our first podcast we might have t- I can't remember which one we talked about it, but I, I was I've been trying to force myself because I I enjoy that, but the problem is I kind of get focused on like finishing the painting. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I've been trying this year. I'm like, all right, I got to really focus on like pulling the painting away when when I because there's a point where I'm like, I think this is done, and then I'll continue to work on it and i gotta i almost have to like stop before i get to that point and pull it away and say like do i even need to add anything Mm -hmm. and you know and then pull it away and then think about it instead of kind of trying to like bulldoze my way through it and say like oh and then a lot of times that'll kind of i'll add stuff that i really am not happy about yeah uh so yeah i mean so i i i i'm definitely still uh, yeah, going way past the point where you pull your paintings away, which is uh, definitely an inspiration to me. Cause I'm like, God, I don't even, I can't. My brain would just kind of OCD explode. <laughs> uh, but I love it. I just, it's almost like the, the art I love is so hard for me to to create because my brain just wants to finish what it starts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I gotta like figure that out. That's like a thing I'm working on this year. It's one of those uh, New Year's resolutions. So. <laughs> oh, is it it's for reals? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah, so so we'll see how that works out. Hopefully it, it's, uh, it, it pans out. I'm, I don't know. I feel like I'm consistently making people <laughs> not I'm, I'm not getting as many likes as I used to is what I, I guess I'm going Oh, back to that again. We've got <laughs> <a> full cir- <laughs> no. That's a good, uh, let's talk about that for a second. (laughs) Now, I was talking to some friends yesterday and, you know, it's interesting because we're talking about like, um, you know, like the buzzwords now, like branding, influencer, Uh content creator. Brand (laughs) brand is the, like my least favorite one. Yeah. And and I'm the same way. Like I'm very much, but the thing that we're talking about that's interesting is, I don't know if it's like a cart and horse thing because- it's going to happen whether you like it or not. The right. second you put something on social media. Cause you mean your brand? like what, yeah. Well, people will brand you. Because yeah. cause I've experienced that too. Like every time, like I change, I do big changes in between bodies right. of work. Yeah. And I have other friends who do that. And every time, like 
I've done that to where I'll lose, like, I think I've lost like 2000 followers before Mm -hmm. by changing the way something looks. So it's like, that's going to, so the whole idea of branding, it's like, you almost kind of got to embrace it a tiny bit because it's being done for you anyways. Yeah. And so you have to understand like the things that come with it. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, like you said, it's like you do something a little bit different. And then it's, yeah, the response will be a little bit lower, which shouldn't matter anyway. Yeah. It's on fucking Instagram. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it, I think even though it's just Instagram, it is still a slight barometer or a peek behind the curtain of how people will react in general, like in terms mm-hmm. of response or even if you want to consider sales or anything like that, mm-hmm. you know, the right. dirty yeah. stuff no one likes to talk about. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Because have you experienced it? Because I was thinking about your work too. Is like, yeah. Because – You've gone like you'll do landscapes and kind yeah. of traditional, and then there's the figures with the roses that are yeah. completely different. Well, what I had to do was basically start a different um, Instagram account for my landscapes because every time I posted landscapes on my main account, oh. I uh, people would kind of either ignore them or just wouldn't. I'd lose followers every time, so yeah. it's like, well, I might as well just <clears throat> make a, a landscape account for people who want to follow that. That's a good idea because I, huh. I I was getting tired of unfollowing you every time. <laughs> I was tired of looking for the dislike button. <laughs> yeah. I've gotten so much better though on my landscape. You should go back and follow it. <laughs> how how'd that work for you? How's that panned out? I, um, I, didn't know I you barely did yeah. I mean, I haven't done a good job of, of promoting my, my landscape Insta account at Sergio Lopez Landscapes for anybody who wants to find it. But uh I mean I barely I I haven't really been focusing on landscapes lately. I just having more fun like doing figures right now and there's right. so much more figurative ideas that I want to explore. So I haven't really been doing too much landscape work. Mm-hmm. Um, lately I have a little bit more because a show is coming up that I need to do some more for, but that's really the only reason I'm, I'm painting on much right now. But um, yeah, it hasn't really done much cause I haven't really promoted it much. I don't really have that many different paintings on my landscape page. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but like for the figures though, I've definitely, or uh, for my main Instagram account, I've definitely started to focus it more on the, the painted roses stuff as of late, because mm-hmm. that's just more of what I've been doing lately. But mm. it'll be interesting to see what happens when I'm finally finishing some of the, the experimental work, how the reaction will be to that. Is that so, going to be your third awesome. Instagram account? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Jesus. Did you come yeah. up with a new name for that one, too? Yeah, it's, I don't uh, even have a, a title or anything for the concept. It's just stuff I've been kicking around for a long time. and just uh, paint it when I get around to it. But I'm very um, I'm very eager to, after this podcast, go on your landscape one and, and write a message. That why says, wait until after? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'll write a message that says, like, now. why do you post so many landscapes? I'd like your uh, figurative stuff much better. <laughs> <laughs> 20,000 or so people agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I'm going to write that on your landscape one. Yeah. <laughs> Can you please post painted roses on it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was kind of uh, – a weird moment too, because the interviewee became the interviewer. You were like, <laughs> "Oh, sorry." Like, no, no, I liked it. I, I was like, like questions. <laughs> it was like, oh. John Wentz podcast coming soon. <laughs> I was, I was waiting for the hard hitting questions. Is what? Oh, those are coming up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, well, because you know I'm way out in the middle of nowhere, so when I get a chance to talk to people, I like, I'd rather right you converse read, than yeah, talk about sure. myself yeah, in sure. my head all the time. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, we're just like poking you nonstop. Tell us about <laughs> yeah. this. Tell us about that. Next No, time. this has been cool. It's been just a conversation. I like that. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Better, you know. Yeah. Uh, all the all the people are wondering what brushes you use and what – I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny is I posted that thing like about any – I did that in a story. Not yeah. one person responded. Really? Yeah, really? No questions. <laughs> You said like, it all no, already. Nobody before. gives a shit. No, they just don't. Nobody cares. Like, I don't care. Yeah, that's why uh, I was thinking. I wanted to do like a. I mean, we should do it. Like was, a, I wanted to do it did live. Ask how you do the little the drippy. Oh, uh, I think backgrounds. Monty did. Yeah. Didn't oh, Monty. it was Monty. I think it was. Oh yeah. I, I can't give that away. Monty. I'm sorry. But he did DM say something about cool enough. school or something like that. Oh, yeah. oh, that's right. That's what it was. Yeah. I don't have a cool school. Do you have a school to? Yeah. No. Do you guys have it? Like, that is kind of a funny thing because it's kind of like a thing nobody talks about. Like, do you have a favorite? Because there's favorite color, like, pink makes me feel good. <laughs> but then there's like, there's a color that you use a lot. Oh. Mm. Technical. I question. don't know. Yeah. I, I don't always know. just say blue because that's just. 
My standard answer what, to that. What yeah. blue? Oh, that's a good question. I don't even know. Cobalt blue? Don't uh-huh. you dare. Oh, co- damn. I don't even use cobalt blue that often. <laughs> don't you but... dare cobalt blue this. All the ultramariners out there are like, fuck yeah. you, sir. <laughs> ultramarine. I, use, I actually use ultramarine way more than oh, cobalt. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I use both. Yeah. Yeah, Another probably question. use them equally. Uh, it depends on what I'm doing. Mm. Are you showing an SS? You're a baller, that's why. I you am a use baller. That. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I'm cobalt. A little, I'm a little, is cobalt more expensive? <laughs> yeah, cobalt's expensive. The fact expensive. that you don't even know that means you're a baller. <laughs> <laughs> I don't pay for my pants. Yeah. Uh, series, fuck you. That's my series <laughs> I'm using. <laughs> uh, Cerulean's nice. I like Cerulean. Cerulean is a good, mm. it's a good blue. Oh, I actually like manganese blue a lot. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. It's a warm blue. Yeah. Manganese. That's racist. <clears throat> uh, that's racist. <laughs> my favorite color is whatever I'm using at the time. Yeah, I used basically. to be really... That's like, a good way to Whenever anyone would ask me what my favorite color was, I used to always say brown. <laughs> yeah. And they'd be like, what the fuck? And, and I, it wasn't like a lie either. I really liked the color brown. That and like orange. <laughs> wow, you're into oranges. Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> I'm not into oranges. Yeah? Huh. Actually, no, I like cadmium <laughs> orange, but it's one of the more expensive uh, colors I use. That's an expensive one. Yeah. <laughs> Cadmiums. Yeah, mm. you just told me that was expensive the other day. I was like, is it? <laughs> <laughs> this guy. Baller. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we'll call it here. I mean, do you, do you want to promote uh, in your social media? <laughs> <laughs> After, <laughs> yeah. I, was, I just After did. All that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah. Uh, John Wentz on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And... Uh, Nice and simple sh- shows or anything yeah. coming up. Um, I'm it, a few things aren't etched in stone, but um, probably going to be doing SF Art Fair. I think it's at the end of April. Okay. Then I have a group show at um, Aben Gallery in mm. June, um, and I forget who everyone who's on there. So I'm screwing up, but I think it's, it's going to be Joseph Martinez, Aaron mm-hmm. Nagel. Alpe, oh, Alpe, I'm sorry, I can't do your last name. It's E F E, Alpe, yeah. F, you know Alpe, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, Eliza, I can't remember her last name now. And I think that, so there's like a five person group show. Mm. It's a portrait show that's in June. Um, and then, I don't know, there's like Miami next year, and then my solo at Hashimoto next February, February 2019. Nice. And then there'll nice. probably be little things in between. Portrait shows are always one of those things that, Sometimes I like love them, and sometimes it's almost like a competition of who can who can do the you know like it, it's great when you get like a variety of like people doing totally different shit. I'm like, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm exci- that's why I'm excited about this because everybody that's in it is just different enough to where like I know what you mean. It's just right. like a lot of those things. It's like okay, just who has the better technique, or right. the better yeah. lighting, or whatever. And yeah. Everybody's styles really different. I think you know I like all their work. Everybody yeah. that's in it, I think so. I, I, I th- and I think that's. The, when things are good they're like that because you just appreciate each piece for its you know they get to kind of live on their own where when it's the competition thing you you almost like skim through the rest and then pick the one you like the most I mean no matter what you're probably going to do that but you do appreciate stuff when things are, are a variety of you know different styles or I don't know if styles even the right word <clears throat> different yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, because, yeah, it's not technique. You're not really yeah. looking at the technique. You're looking at the different visions that those people yeah. have, which yeah. is, I think, a little bit more interesting, or nice. at least that's what I enjoy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if yeah. you're if you're in France pretty soon, go hit up John. He'll be able to hang out with you. Yeah, let me know. Unless Meet you at the cafe. Unless you're not cool. <laughs> oh, I'm not cool. So. <laughs> okay. I don't care what Monty says. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Take it back, Monty. Uh, and then... Um, yeah, and uh, and I guess you'll be back here in a, what, like a couple months. Yeah, I'll be back in June, and then I, don't, I have no idea what mm. I'm going to be doing. Right. Then I'm on, <laughs> like I said, my Forrest Gump tour, so I just kind of <laughs> go somewhere, work for a bit, and then go somewhere else. Huh. Nice. We'll see what happens then. Yeah. So uh, I mean, I just wanted to th- thank you for I th- they. Th- I just wanted to th- thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah. Thanks for doing this, man. Uh, really <laughs> appreciate you. it. Uh, and uh, yeah, so this has been Waiting to Dry. If you're still listening, fuck off. <laughs>